Give us is your agenda, everything, even clubs. So let's keep on giving. Eh? <laughs> and it's because of giving that we have reached where we are as a ministry. You know, giving our leadership, giving our influence, giving our finances, our expertise. And that is the spirit. So we also want to, uh, to recognize the presence of uh, Mr. Robert Balusi and Miss Grace Balusi. Yeah, we also, uh, part of, uh, we also have our keynote speaker, Mr. Don't know where, uh, Mr. Sami Langatz. <laughs> Karibu sana. <laughs> Karibu sana, together with uh, your wife, Rosbella. Is she, she has not, is she around or she, is she coming? But in her absentia, we just want to recognize her. And Mr. Sami Langat, uh, Dr. Dr. Rosbella and uh, Mr. Sami Langat also serve as the ILU council members. So we really thank God for your work. We also want to uh, recognize the Life Ministry Kenya Board, Advocate. Welcome Arnold and Rebecca, we had acknowledged you. So I just want to recognize also the Life Ministry Kenya Board. We have Advocate Kamonjo. We recognize you, Dr. Esther Mushemi, she's not here, but in the absentia, we also want to acknowledge them and recognize them. Uh, CPA Gidae, I think I saw. Okay, and Dr. Mamboleo, Dr. Mamboleo. So can we recognize them even in the absentia? <laughs> we also want to recognize uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're here, but also in the absentia because they are part of the guests that we invited. Dr. Musimbi Ondeko, who is uh, part of the ILF, Dr. Uh, Catherine Getao, and Coach Miriam Gashago. Can we just appreciate them? <laughs> and together with us, we have our friends and our brothers and our co we can say our co-workers in life ministry. We have national team leaders and I would, it's my, my great pleasure to recognize the national team leader for Ethiopia, Mr. Girma Altai. We appreciate you, sir. We also want to recognize and appreciate the national team leader Tanzania, Mr. Gideon Mzonya. Life ministry thrives in partnerships you know, working with other people, other like-minded ministries to advance the Great Commission. I mean, our focus is very, very, very clear. So we have very many partnering organizations that we work with. The first partnering organization that I'd want to acknowledge, hope uh, Dr. Claire Nyambati is around. Dr. Claire Nyambati from the 410 Bridge. But we can appreciate them. <laughs> is uh, Malalengao with us? Malalengao from Oasis International. We can also appreciate them. And then we have Professor Tim Kirui and your family from the International Leadership University. Let's appreciate Prof. <laughs> then we have Felix Mungai from Strategic Fellowship for High School Ministries, SFH SFHM. You know, where I come from, my tongue is really betraying me. So if the, we can just appreciate uh, Felix Mungai. Do we have Alex Kiamba? Alex, can we appreciate Alex from the Navigators? I use quite a number of your materials. <laughs> God bless you. Then we have Ishmael Macharia from One Hope. Ishmael? We can appreciate Ishmael. Maybe he's going to join us in a few. My friend uh, Shem Irungu from uh, Kenya Youth for Christ. I don't know if Shemi Rungu is with us already, but I know he should be on his way coming, they confirmed. We can appreciate Kenya Youth for Christ. <laughs> we also have what we call the Christian CEOs Association. If you didn't know now you, for all the CEOs in the house, <laughs> this is the person to see, uh, Rogers Odema, Rogers. So I, I, I don't think it's, it, it is humble if you're a CEO and you refuse to join. Eh? <laughs> so just get in touch with Rogers and associate with, uh, with your peers. We also want to recognize uh, uh, great uh, leaders and fathers. 
uh, in the faith and uh, lead us in the faith, Bishop Dr. Geoffrey Njiguna, he was to come by 11. I don't know if he has already arrived, but we're going to see him, so we want to appreciate him uh, in absentia, and of course he will come. He's also a council member for the International Leadership University. We also want to recognize uh, the confirmation of Bishop Gibson Advate from uh, KAG. He's going to be here, and also Pastor Estangio uh, from Faith Community Church in Kitale. Can we appreciate all of them? Pastor Esther is with us. Oh, Pastor Esther, Karibu Sana. Thank you for honoring us with your presence. And also, most importantly, all the partners of Life Ministry Kenya. I want you to just give yourself a standing ovation and just thank the Lord for granting you an opportunity to partner with this great commission. So we want to... We want to appreciate all of the partners who are here with us. Can you just rise up and just clap for the Lord for granting you that opportunity to be with us? Because this is your day. This is your day. And we thank the Lord for that. Amen. Great. So right now we want to get into understanding what is the life ministry Kenya. Just to remind us, I know we've interacted with Life Ministry. One of the things that we've noticed is some of us have partnered with, you know, Life Ministry for so long, but have never been here. You know, just because of the love and the grace of God, you know. So it's important for us to understand what Life Ministry Kenya is. So uh, I'm working with my team, my media team. We're going to, ha say, to have a short video to just demonstrate or to showcase who is Life Ministry Kenya. Are we ready? Someone should work on that uh, screen on my left so that we can serve. Each imparting their world for Christ. Can we start it again? Life Ministry Kenya. We are part of this story. Good. So today again, uh, I get to experience, there's a picture that I love and I use it a long, a lot of times when I'm making presentations about our country, Kenya, for those who are not uh, probably Kenyans. There's a picture that uh, our four presidents, from the founding president to the former president, were taken in one room. And the former president was a little boy, you know, and they were all in one room. And I think today, uh, in 20, I told, I told the story about 18 years ago, 2018, 2008, when I went to uh, Mozambique, and we were hosted by Arnold and Rebecca. And the team leader for the mission was uh, Robert, you know, Balusi and Tish. Uh, I wish on that particular occasion, because I was also a little boy, I had taken a picture with the both of them, then we would all predict what would happen in the next couple of years. <laughs> So when, whenever you get time to take pictures with people that you admire, just take a picture, you know. Images have a way of inspiring, right? Uh, the Englishmen say that uh, pictures have more words. They, they, they speak volumes eh, than words. So we're really also very eager to celebrate the commissioning of uh, uh, the national uh, director for Campus Life, Campus uh, Life Ministry Kenya, you know, today. So that's part of, you know, Campus Life is where I began. <laughs> you, you never forget the foundations, right? It's like forgetting your village. <laughs> so Campus Life is where I began my interactions with Life Ministry Kenya and the impact that that had on me has really stuck to date. So media, are we ready? Yeah, good. Imagine a movement spreading across Kenya from the heart of the cities to the far reaches of rural communities. Imagine students 
professionals and leaders coming together, empowered by faith, each imparting their world for Christ. At the Life Ministry Kenya, we are part of this story, committed to equipping individuals to influence their world for Christ, wherever they are. Since 1973, we have embarked on this powerful journey, a journey of faith, growth, and fruitfulness. Over the years, we have grown into a movement that reaches across generations and the nation. All united by one mission, to make multiplying disciples. Our vision is bold, to build spiritual movements in every county so that everyone knows someone who truly follows Jesus. Our mission is to win, build, and send Christ-centered, multiplying disciples, launching movements that will transform lives and communities across this nation. Our diverse strategies engage people across all demographics, inspiring transformation and empowering individuals to live out their calling in Christ. Our student-led movement reaches young people in high schools, universities and colleges, raising a generation of Christ-like leaders. In SLM, we desire to see three things. We desire to see the gospel for every student. We desire to see a movement which is being led by different leaders. And you also want to see multiplying disciples in and in every county in Kenya. In the digital age, we are reaching beyond physical borders through digital strategies. By leveraging technology, we bring the message of hope to countless individuals online, empowering people to share their faith through digital tools and platforms. We do this by radically accelerating the fulfillment of the Great Commission across all audiences and meeting them where they are using digital approaches, principles, and tools. We don't make tools, we make disciples. Through leader strategies, we engage professionals and marketplace leaders, equipping them to lead with integrity and purpose. As they carry their faith into the marketplace and public life, they are positioned to inspire change and lead others to Christ. We work with leaders from the seven spheres of society, the economy, education, government, media, celebration, which encompasses the art, entertainment, and sports, and family. As our slogan says, you can do it, we can help. Our Jesus Film strategy continues to be a powerful tool for evangelism. By showing the life of Jesus to thousands across Kenya, we are introducing many to Christ sparking life-changing conversations and making new disciples. Global church movements empower church leaders to multiply their impact. We contribute to the fulfillment of our mission by helping to establish multiplying churches and missional communities for everyone, everywhere. All these efforts are only possible because of you, our partners. Your support, your commitment, and your prayers have helped us reach countless lives with the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you for being a vital part of our movement building journey. Your partnership is making all the difference. May the Lord bless you as you continue to give your life for God's glory. Thank you and God bless you. Wonderful, can we appreciate the good work that the Lord is doing. And I think one of the things that I'll keep on saying from this uh, podium is thank you so much. Thank you for being faithful. You know, thank you for giving uh, your all and your best, you know, to ensure that we reach very many souls for Christ. At this particular point, we want to also experience one of these practical, you know, uh, initiatives 
and ministry that are happening, uh, especially in uh, you know the unreached populations, all the way to is in, in Isiolo. You know, there's a program that we call STAR. STAR means, you know, in Kiswahili. Eh, this is in Kiswahili, Kenya, <laughs> Koroga. <laughs> You know, when you speak Swahili in the presence of Tanzanians, they wonder which Swahili are you referring to. So star means to basically, you know, it's kind of a star up, make it, you know, a little more invigorating. So we have a, a partner testimony. I'm going to call on stage uh, Patrick. Patrick is one of the partners who is working in Isiolo to ensure that uh, there's cross-cultural mission work that is happening among students in Isiolo. For those who know Isiolo, Isiolo is one of the arid and semi-arid lands you know, of Kenya. It's very dry. You know, if you are posted there by government, you're given a hardship allowance. You know, so that's how you know, uh, Isiolo is. So we want to uh, welcome our brother, uh, Patrick. So a little bit about Patrick. Patrick is a software engineer at uh, parity building uh, parity building platforms that connect companies with talent with, with talent his passion is creating solutions for a world uh, ever in need of innovation uh, solutions tech innovation solutions he loves traveling watching nature shows and playing board games and his interest is in technology trends he is a physicist and he looks and observes and admires the wonders of nature. So help me, Patrick, where you are, please. As I was reading your great you know, credentials. So Patrick, we really appreciate and we thank you for the work that you're doing in Isiolo. And uh, just share with us what's happening in Isiolo under the STAR program. Good morning. Praise God. My name is Patrick Mwangi. I'm a software engineer. Um, I want to share my journey and how I came to be a partner with STAR. Uh, this began when I was still in school and I was invited to a program, a study group, by a classmate. At that time I didn't know uh, what we were going to study, but I had just gotten served, so I was eager and I, was in, uh, I really needed to, to learn more about Christ. So when I attended this study group, I realized uh, it was a mobilization. Uh, and they were mobilizing students, at that time I was in Kenyatta University, to participate in a mission. And as I continue going to this discussion, I loved them. And it was clear and I got a conviction that I should be part of this great commission. One thing that was disappointing when we were, we were completing that course was a note that was in that study material, study course, that said only 2% of those people who are interested in mission actually end up doing mission. And uh, that meant in that group we were about 10 or 15 people. That meant only one or two people will end up doing mission. And I got the conviction that if it's only one person who is going to go, uh, will continue doing mission, let it be me. So uh, when we completed the study, uh, we went for a practice experience in Isiolo. And that's when I got to hear about life ministry. And I also got to hear about STAR. Uh, so when I completed school, I wanted to be part of STAR. But there was some financial finances that was required, 10,000 shillings, but due to financial constraint, I was not able to attend the program. So when I started working, I made it uh, my, I made it in my heart that I'll be part of STAR and I'll also be supporting those who want to do STAR because you don't know how many students actually are willing to be part of the Great Commission to do mobilizing, also to be goers and also to participate in giving but they don't have the training required, uh, they don't have uh, a way to be able to get to these places so that's how I got to hear about STAR and also got to hear about Life Ministry and that's how I got to be a partner with STAR. Last or this year's program for STAR has been successful. I went, I contributed to that program uh, to make it easier for those who are studying it. I also visited Isiolo um, to get to know them better. And actually I made friends. I'm still in contact with three of them. I'm also discipling them in other 
matters because this one of them who is studying computer science, which I also did, and also uh, discipling them in that area. It was a success, and actually the first time to come here, it was when I was attending their graduation. Praise the Lord. One thing that I've learned when partnering with this, uh, with the Life Ministry, is that God always provide. And uh, another thing, it's the power of discipleship. Because in that study program that I was talking about, uh, we've kept in touch with almost every member who was studying the program. And we've been able to keep each other accountable. Some are goa, some are giving, some are also welcoming when others visit. And one of those partners is Stanley. I know most of you know Stanley. Uh, and uh, others are in other organization. Praise the Lord. Um, my w one d after those lessons, one thing that maybe I'll advise us to is to continue supporting students and also continue partnering with this organization so that we can make it easier for others to, to also learn and to be part of the Great Commission. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Patrick, for sharing your great testimony. Isn't this heavenly? <laughs> Isn't this heavenly? Yeah, this is wonderful. I mean, some of us were fished as students. Before I continue, I, I would want to apologize. There's one uh, uh, board member for Life Ministry Kenya that I recognize, my brother and my mentor, Dr. Keith Nindi, and your wife. Let's appreciate Dr. Keith. Dindi, he's also chairing the Ignite, you know, uh, planning committee. Ignite is going to be in Africa this year, so he's also my chair in the committee. So God bless you, Keith, for serving and supporting us. One of the things that is very, uh, very profound that Patrick has said is that only two percent of all people who are interested in doing missionary work actually do it. Let us reflect on that. And it's, it's amazing how just the people who support, especially uh, like Patrick, can cause a very big difference you know, in building the workers. The Bible says that when Jesus was living, he actually uh, says that the, the laborers are, the laborers are, but the harvest is. So if Jesus was a business coach, he would actually tell you, focus on the Focus on what? On the laborers. And I think Life Ministry Kenya caught the value proposition or the business idea of our Savior Jesus Christ that if you work on building more laborers, the harvest is ready for all of us. Amen. So let us continue supporting in building more workers and more laborers across the country. At this particular point, we want to see a video that explains to us what is the win, build, and send. You know, a... Uh, idea. What do we mean when we say we are winning, building, and sending? I hope my media team is ready with that video. Win, build, send. I think if you've been engaged with Life Ministry, that is, those three words are words that we keep on repeating. Eh? Win, build, send. So we don't just challenge people to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, but we equip them to go out also as laborers, because we know the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. And if we get that business, you know, nudged from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we will focus on discipling many believers to be multiplying disciples. Are we ready? So thank you so much, Patrick, uh, for that. Immediately after we see the video, we're going to also have another partner impact testimony. Remember today we say it's a day of thanksgiving. We want to thank the Lord for what he has done over the last one year. We also want to thank you for being available and giving yourself to be part of this work. So we're going to have another partner impact testimony from our brother Philip Monyao so that we can have a feel of what Life Ministry Kenya and the dedication that the dedication that we have in the Great Commission is doing through men and women like like me and you. So if the media is still not ready, we can 
yeah, we can probably get to hear from Philip so that I can give uh, my media team some time to just deal with the technical issues. So we have our brother Philip. Our brother Philip is also a partner with the Life uh, Ministry Kenya. He's a born again Christian, married to one wife of his youth, one female wife of his youth called Alice Wanjiro. He's a father of two girls, Pendo and Neema. He says that he's a patriot, patriotic Kenya, Kenyan, and uh, a banker by profession. Currently works with the NCBA Bank, and uh, he graduated uh, with BCom from the University of Nairobi, and is a certified public accountant of Kenya. So he's very passionate about the well-being of others and a follower of Jesus Christ. Help me welcome uh, Brother Philip Munyao. Brother Philip. Thank you so much, Philip. Karibu sana. Thank you for accepting to share your partner impact testimony. Thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, as you heard, my name is Philip Munyao. I'm a born again Christian. I'm a banker working at NCBA Bank. My journey with the Life Ministry began in 2017 when Bill, Bill Dindi, who is a partner, who is a staff in this ministry, reached out to me and he, he presented what Life Ministry is all about, how they reach out to people, how they disciple students, and even reach the unreached people. And one thing caught my attention when he said that he needed to raise support. For me, that was scary that uh, you could actually raise support for your, for your living. For me, that was very scary for him. I went home, told my wife that there is something that has come up and we really need to support. And so we began supporting Bill in 2017 and we've been on this journey for the last, uh, I think now, adding to uh, eight years. And God has been faithful. He's provided for us, he's been with us, and he has expanded us. And looking back, I say thank you to Bill for coming our way. For me, it is an opportunity that God has given us to actually be co-workers in the ministry. What Life Ministry is doing is a wonderful thing that I, when I look back, I think it's in the, look, in the book of Luke chapter 10, when Jesus sent out the 72, and he tells them that you do not carry a purse or a bag. For me, that is what the life ministry is all about. But he tells them something, that you will find a man of peace in the cities you go to. And there, you announce your peace upon them. For me, this day is asking us to be those men of peace that we may receive the staff that God has sent our way, that they may actually concentrate on reaching out. Because it's an individual uh, journey for all of us. It's a commission, a charge to every Christian that we should go out. But what a wonderful journey if you could partner with someone else that will do it together. Every time they, I see the updates of what Life Ministry is doing, I feel like I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm part of the journey because I support. I encourage all of us to be part of the journey because the reward is there. When we began, we were younger in our career and God has actually enlarged us and progressed us in a faster way than we could actually have believed when we began. May God bless you and be encouraged. Thank you. Thank you so much, Philip. Trust me, what Philip is saying is true. It's very scary to get out there and say, I'm going to believe <laughs> that the Lord is going to provide. I just want to appreciate all the 72 who uh, are represented here, who went out without a bag and a pass. Can we just appreciate them? <laughs> but, but most importantly also, I just want to appreciate the men of peace who received them when they met them. And I think very many men of peace are here who say that I've received you not going to go back thirsty. So let us appreciate all the partners, the men of peace. <laughs> yeah, I want to believe that uh, now the media team is ready for the wind build send video.
yeah, you know, sometimes these computers, they try to push us, but we will not be pushed, eh? <laughs> we, we, we will we'll press the buttons. As, as they try to find their way, and all of us have heard what uh, Philip has shared, I just want around the table, yeah, just around the table in the next 30 seconds or so, just share one or two impact stories of your experience with Life Ministry Kenya over the years. Just one or two, something that can excite the person who is sitting next to you. I know all of us have a personal story with Life Ministry Kenya, either with a partner, either as just one, in the next 30 seconds, please, around the table, I want to... I can hear the testimonies are flying across the tables. That could just remind someone. <laughs> All right. Great, I know they are great. If, if there was a an interesting, insightful testimony in your desk. Just let me see by the show of hands. Loads and loads of testimonies. Just when I want to take your attention, that's when the testimonies are getting louder. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing. So right now we want to get to see how the, our ministry in the year 2024. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I should have known that I'm dealing with believers, you know, who have great testimonies and they're looking for an opportunity to share them. So right now we want to just have a feel of the impact that Life Ministry Kenya has had in the year 2024. And to help us understand that, we've summarized this into a short video that I invite all of you to just listen in and watch as we celebrate what the Lord has done uh, in the ministry in the year 2024. Are we ready? My name is Christian Swema from Bridge Upendo. And I'd love to share my experience on Bridge that teachers really impact my life. I personally have gotten to grow spiritually. So we got to evangelize to some people at Kibira. And I really thank God. We have this privilege to share the word with them. I want to thank Bridge for the opportunity that they gave me to fellowship with them, to get to know knowledge about everything, about the Bible, and also to help others and also prepare myself in joining the university. The experience that I had, I was able to encounter God and I was able to get saved through that. And my work has been great, has been better. I'm able to read my Bible, I'm able to disciple other people, I'm able to pray and even fast. That is an experience that I didn't have before. So that is a great testimony that I have that Bridge has been impactful in my life and I've been able to experience God and I've also been able to change in how I see things and how I view God's people. I once thought that sharing a story or sharing a problem towards someone is a sign of weakness. Well, when I joined the bridge program, I noticed that you don't have to be a politician to bring change into the society. I've learned from the four pillars that I've been taught, I've learned a lot and I'd like to share it, especially the leadership program, yes. 
personally learned to public speak. It's not been easy the past couple of months, but through Bridge I've been able to speak in public. I'm more confident and for that I am thankful to God and thankful to the Bridge program. I can say this experience has been nice. We have learned so much. We started with the career thingy and for me that hit home because most of us make mistakes because when you don't make the personality or rather match the personality and the career, you know. And uh, sexual purity, we talked about that. Purity, uh, we were told one thing that um, purity fights our silent battles. I like Actually, Bridge has made me to become more confident. I have seen the lives of people transformed. I have a mentee by the name of Naya. She joined Bridge this year. When she joined Bridge, she was shy. She really didn't know much about the about Christianity. We had a conversation where we asked if people are saved. And she said that she was not saved. So later on, after many sessions, she came and opened up herself to me. And we are going through a journey of mentorship. She gave her life to Jesus two Sundays ago. Super happy about that. I'm seeing that she's being very open. She's more consistent in her Bible reading. And we're still continuing the journey with her. I'm waiting and eager to see where she'll get to in a few years from now. In Bridge, I've been able to learn a lot. First of all, the best thing that I liked about Bridge is that I was able to learn about dynamic personalities. It's something that we were taught. I was able to understand my personality by using the cardinal points of a compass, whereby I learned that I'm a Western. I was very happy to know that I have positive and negative impact through my personality. Um, there are leadership, career talks, again getting to know how to socialize with people, their social life, the sexual purity, it has been a great idea for the life ministry again to engage us. It's been so interactive and one thing that I've loved is that they're also willing to learn, ready to receive and also asking questions of their normal life experiences, maybe what their friends and families are going through. And the good thing about what to teach them, which them diverse topics from sexual purity to careers, to science, to the word of God, who is God, to the Trinity that is God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Actually, in uh, building my relationship with God, as compared to before, when I was not that, my relationship with God was not that intimate. And the PRIPS program basically targets to reach out to the ex-candidates. These are students who have just cleared high school before they get to go in campus. And it is a very rough time during that time if you don't ensure that you are able to get the right life skills and people to work with you. So in that time we started that program and what is exciting is this is a program that has metamorphosed over time and it runs for four months. During that time we get to equip the bridges on life skills, we train them on evangelism and on discipleship. Oh, great, wonderful. Can we appreciate that great story of impact? What is really interesting and inspiring about this impact story is if you've met parents who are parents of the Gen Zs, <laughs> then you'll understand why this is impact. You will understand why we are focusing on this. And I had one testimony from one of the Gen Zs that I am, my testimony is now I can pray and fast. <laughs> can you imagine a Gen Z saying that I, I testify that the Lord has helped me to learn how to fast. So let us appreciate God for what Life Ministry Kenya is doing with the Gen Z's, with the young generation. I receive very many calls from very many parents of sons and daughters asking, can you mentor my? my son or my daughter, we have a platform. So I encourage all of you, take the flyers for uh, 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 student-led ministries for Bridge and hand it over to someone who is in need. We know these parents, they are our friends, they are our relatives, they are our neighbors, and please ex interest them to enroll their children, their sons and daughters for Bridge. Right now, we also want to have a glimpse of the International Leadership University. I believe the video is ready. We know very well that ILU is part, uh, one of the success stories of Life Ministry Kenya.
So we want to also get a feel of what the Lord is doing uh, and what are the current developments, what are the future plans in the International Leadership University. In Kenya today and even in Africa, if any leader does, says I don't know where to learn about leadership and integrity, it is deliberate because we have a solution. <laughs> At International Leadership University, that is what we focus on, right? You, if, if you want to learn, if it is not inborn, if you say me, I don't know integrity, I want to learn integrity. I think the International Leadership University, the Lord has enabled, you know, uh, Professor Tim uh, Kiruhi and his faculty to package, you know, a curriculum that can help all our leaders to lead in the fear of the Lord and with integrity, because that is a big deficiency in our context, you know. So apart from praying for our leaders, Life Ministry Kenya also has opened a platform for them to practically engage. So I hope the video is ready. Can we encourage my media team? Just encourage them, they're doing a great job. vision is to be able to mobilize sufficient numbers of leaders, of transforming leaders uh, who will be able to bring about the needed change. Provide an opportunity for formation where people are able to grow in character, in skill, in dealing maybe with life issues. That's where our counseling program comes in. Here at ILU, in the School of Education and Social Sciences, we actually train professional psychological counselors to help meet that need in the society. Our theology program also helps people to clarify who they are and their calling in life. If God is calling you to ministry, if you are a pastor or involved in other ministry in the church, then you need to receive biblical and theological education. And then also we have our program uh, in the area of course of leadership and governance. Our School of Leadership and Governance, we are uh, very committed to being part of the vision, an essential part of the vision of developing leaders of integrity. And that's one of the reasons why we are appealing for more students, why we want to see more leaders raised at ILU. There are three areas that are important to us. One is raising leaders, of course, who not only are strong on character, but also have the competence and then they are able to engage in their context. My area of focus is on leadership and mainly focusing on values and norms of leadership for politicians. I serve as the executive director of Teen Challenge Kenya that is a Christian rehabilitation program helping people out of the brokenness and bondage of addiction. So this provides formation. We believe that at this, our society, the nation can change if everyone who is living an institution like ours influences their immediate community and also the society. We promise that everyone who comes has a personal transformative experience. This is a uniquely designed uh, way of uh, you know, discipling and mentoring one another. There's also a build-up relationship between students and members of faculty, but also it's also extended to the administrative staff. So you get to know one another, you get to interact, you get to be shaped, you get to be strengthened, and so it will be a very good platform, especially for those who are young and will want to grow in their areas of career. And this is complemented not only by the classrooms, uh, which are rich in content, um, you know, that's based on values, but also the mentorship experience that everybody has a privilege of experiencing at ILU. He's a member of the Consortium of University Libraries, where we together have uh, put uh, resources. Um, and through these resources, you can access through VPN to our library from wherever you are. We will support you in whichever programs that you are taking 
from wherever you are using our resources. The second reason is that uh, not only would you experience that transformation, we also of course have the highest standards for our academic programs. So if you want to have an education that will have a meaningful impact on your life, choose ILU. All our programs currently are accredited by the Commission for University Education. I welcome you to International Leadership University. The enrollment is simple. You just need to reach out to us, reach out to our registrar's office and apply and get started in our university. I want to encourage you to, um, to come into it, to come into ILU and see the difference that it will make in your own life and even for the future. All the best as you make that decision. God bless you. Amen. Let us appreciate the ILU. Those who are looking forward to enhance their education, master's level, PhD, postdoc. After this forum, I think uh, Professor Tim can open the office <laughs> for registration this afternoon. We really appreciate the work that you're doing. Uh, I'm almost making this morning a movie morning <laughs> because I also want to invite you now to the last shot you know, a video, the wind builds and video, because it's very important, that's the bottom line. How do we win, you know, a men and women to have a relationship with the, with the Lord? How do we equip them uh, for them to be able to go out and win others and equip them? So that's very critical, it's at the core of, you know, the work uh, that we do. I also want to recognize uh, Dr. Esther Mushemi, who has just arrived one of the Life Ministry Kenya board members. So my media team, are you ready? The Life Ministry Kenya's purpose is to help fulfill the Great Commission in Kenya and beyond. At the heart of our mission is to win, build, and send Christ-centered multiplying disciples in obedience to the great commission of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as outlined in Matthew 28, 18, 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Win boldly through bold evangelistic initiatives. We are committed to sharing the good news of Jesus with boldness. We know that God created people to experience his love, walk in his ways, and live in fellowship with him. So we take the first good opportunity to share how an individual can know God personally. Build deeply through multiple discipleship strategies and initiatives. Jesus calls us to make disciples, not converts. With this in mind, we focus on establishing new believers and nurturing young Christians in their faith, encouraging personal growth and inspiring fruitfulness in their lives, all for the glory of God. The Life Ministry Kenya is committed to building up people in their faith and multiplying the message of Christ and their changed lives in alignment with 2 Timothy 2.2. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. 
send urgently. We take the Great Commission seriously and believe that the call to mission is for all believers. Being a Christian means helping others discover how to have a relationship with Jesus. To that end, we are dedicated to equipping others with tools, strategies, and methods to communicate the gospel clearly and consistently. Through our commitment to winning people to Christ, building them in their faith, and sending them out to reach others, we are launching spiritual movements in Kenya and beyond. We praise God for the many lives and communities transformed through the Life Ministry Kenya's evangelism and discipleship initiatives. Join us in this mission. Your partnership empowers us to share the gospel with unreached nurtured believers and send them out as multiplying disciples of Christ. Together we can advance the kingdom of God. Together with the body of Christ, we are helping to fulfill the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ through our wind build, send initiatives until everyone knows someone who truly follows Christ. Thank you so much. I think we can appreciate we can appreciate that. Because I believe the message is really home, right? What this is all about is building people to have a relationship, getting people to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, building them in their faith so that they can understand their their commission and their calling making them have the capacity to multiply, you know, by sending them outside there to reach to others so that we do what Jesus Christ commanded us to do. At this particular point, because of the great things that the Lord has done, because of the great testimonies that we've had, we just want to take a moment to have a Thanksgiving prayer. And who is better placed to do this than one of the testimonies of Life Ministry Kenya? Remember I told you about Life Ministry Kenya got the idea correctly. It's about building workers. So I want to invite on stage Pastor Kevin Kilonzi. Pastor Kevin Kilonzi, I can attest that he's an original product, you know, from Life Ministry Kenya mentorship, all the way from the university. Thank you so much, Pasi. Wow, can we just appreciate uh, our MC for the day? He's doing such a good job, come on. KK Kinusu uh, was our team leader uh, back uh, at college. I wanna, you know, I've been called to uh, do a prayer of Thanksgiving, but you know, Thanksgiving is also comes with, you know, like an awareness of, of, you know, of life transformation. Am I making sense? Like the things that God has already been able to do. You look back, and your heart just melts uh, with Thanksgiving. Uh, when I look at this table, for example, every one of those uh, members, uh, vice chair in you know through other <laughs> through the different leaders that have been able to uh, impact our lives my heart bubbles with passion mr langat come into your house and you you fade in us um, uh, mr arnold zova uh, when we went to do our first mission in in mozambique and you were there you taught us uh, our missions uh, 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 you know grace uh, tish and balusi can we just thank god for these guys what <laughs> For me, it was a story of impact uh, on, as a first year student uh, coming to Nairobi, not knowing people, not knowing my way around, and they took us uh, as young people and continues to build us up, up to now. And not just me, but there's a table over there of people that have you know, been brought up uh, by Life Ministry, the guys at least that you went to school uh, with. People found spouses, people found meaning, people found purpose. To date, my status on, uh, on Instagram, uh, and, well, not Instagram, on on WhatsApp is actually missions everywhere uh, and just you know pursuing uh, uh, that call and so we thank God uh, for you uh, Paul talks to 
uh, the Corinthians because guys are asking for letters of commendation. And he says to the Corinthians that you show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hands, uh, hearts. The idea is, as we give thanks to God, the, 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 the work of the ministry is not buildings and, and institutions that have been changed, but it's lives, it's people who are living differently today on account of this ministry. On account of this ministry, there are marriages that are being done differently, there is parenting that is being done differently, there, there are organizations that are, are flowing differently just because of the impact of this organization. I think with that, it's good for us to just come back to God and say thank you. Amen? Can you say thank you yourself? Can you just go before the Lord and maybe uh, utter that prayer of thanksgiving, say, Lord, thank you. Thank you because I don't know where your children are. For me, I know my son is different because uh, Balusi's children are different. On account of where they are, as we watch their children, we've fashioned our own marriage, we've fashioned our own parenting after them. And I don't know who you are following, but there's someone in life ministry has impacted you. Maybe your finances are different on account of how you have to partner with someone else, how you handle your finances, remembering there's someone else you're supporting. Uh, uh, give your thanksgiving. Maybe your marriage is different, your organization is different, how you view missions is different, how you view serving in church is different because that's where I am. Uh, that our lives today as we serve is different on account of this ministry. Heavenly Father, we give you glory and we give praises. Receive uh, 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 adoration, receive honor, receive worship uh, from us this morning. We are coming back to you to say thank you. Thank you for years and years of faithfulness. Thank you for years and years of men who counted the cost, who took uh, up the work and they walked with conviction uh, with what you are calling ahead of them. Mighty Jehovah, thank you for people who have supported this ministry. Uh, uh, some, you know, in obscurity, but they did that, oh God. Uh, people who have given their two mites, but also people who have given their lives as well. Father, we thank you for men and women who have uh, become examples for others to follow. Thank you for men and women who have picked up people from a young age, people who have picked up students, uh, are taken them through bridge, walked through with them through college, walked with them through the uh, uh, journey of finding spouses into marriage and into business, into career, into academia, almighty Jehovah. You have done well, and our hearts are bubbling with passion. Our hearts are bubbling with joy. As you consider the work that has been done, as you consider communities that have been impacted, as you consider industries that have been turned over, as you consider uh, all these things that you've done for us, Lord, how can we uh, uh, not come back and say thank you? We remember those that you healed and one back, Kate, turned back to come and say thank you. And so, Lord, you have done well. We are grateful to belong here. We are grateful that you are part of this ministry. We are grateful of the men and women in different uh, uh, spaces that impacted Almighty Jehovah. And we are waiting with eager expectation of even much more work that you're going to do ahead of us. And so receive thanks not just for what you've done, but now receive thanks for what you are going to do as well. Heavenly Father, we look forward uh, uh, to people being impacted that are yet to be impacted. We look forward to people being worn, being built, and being sent. There is still a lot that is ahead of us. And my Lord and my King, our hearts will bubble with passion, will bubble with joy, will bubble up with uh, eager expectation of what you are yet to do. More than that, receive thanks for who you are. Whether you did anything, whether you, uh, uh, we, we perceive it or not, the fact that you are a redeemer, you justify, the fact that you, you heal and you restore, that that's who you are in essence. You receive thanks, almighty Jehovah. And we give you honor and glory in the mighty and much less name of our Lord Christ and Savior. I do pray and believe. And all of us said, amen. all of us shouted, amen. amen and amen. Thank you so much, my brother, Pastor Kevin. And yeah, we thank God, we thank the Lord. Do you know some of those questions that uh, uh, our seniors, like Balusi, used to ask us are very critical even at our age? Just try and ask a person, what was your memory verse for the week? <laughs> you know, we, we think that those questions <laughs> are supposed to be asked for 
to, to you know people in bridge and you know in colleges but i think to date all of us need some form of accountability you know some form of that discipleship to ensure that we are all on on course so let's keep on doing that work thank you so much at this point i just want to uh, it's, it's 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 a great moment for us to receive from our keynote uh, speaker the keynote address our keynote uh, speaker for today is uh, uh, Mr. Sami uh, Langat, and Mr. Sami Langat is uh, also one of the International uh, Leadership University Council. Uh, he is a banker by profession, a graduate of the University of Nairobi School of Economics. So all of us who are really grappling with the economy right now, the grace of economics is with us. <laughs> so I believe you're going to be different. You know, and let's prepare to receive from, from Mr. Sami. He previously served as the Chief Executive Officer of Transnational Bank and the immediate former Board Chair of the Life Ministry Kenya. He's a champion of agribusiness. You're talking about good food, eh? And agriculture is the backbone of our economy. So today we really have the right, you know, uh, person. Sami's life verse is 2 Timothy 4 and verse number 2, which says, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. His heart goes out to developing young leaders and together with his family, they have hosted them in their home. And it is not a lie. Pastor Kevin said it here before I read it. So that is true. So help me, ladies and gentlemen, by just rising up, if you can, please, to invite Mr. Sami Langat, who is passionate about family life and is married to Dr. Rosbella Langat, and they are blessed with two children. Karibu sana. Thank you. You can have your seats. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think Kevin knew that my voice is deep and I can, I can speak even without the mic. Now, you may be wondering why I'm carrying this book today. There is a book here. This is a book of secrets. This book, we, we, all the Sundays that we have had with visitors that came to our home, on, on a Sunday. So we would write some of the reflections on this book. And in 2009, first March 2009, that is 15 years ago, we wrote some things here and promised to read them 20 years down the line. But it is 15 years from 2009. You will enable me to, or you will excuse that I would read them, because it's about impact. We want to see the impact of some of the things that we were able to do when we were in life ministry at that time. Because these young men, the one including Kevin here, who is now a pastor in Mavuno. Yes, there, there. So they came to our home and they said, please prepare a good meal. We don't only want to come in and just because it was a Sunday, but it was life ministry, it was a mentoring session. So then we decided to say, okay, fine, let's do it. But later on, we see, uh, we will, I was going to read this after 20 years. They were led by their team leader. You know that time, Life Ministry was student-led. It was mainly, it was about students mainly. And it was led by Robert Balusi. That was, uh, the, he was the leader of, of, of that group. Very thin, young, <laughs> Tish, Tish was just a girl, a small girl. So let me read the stories. And you'll, you'll, you'll allow me. Now, if you are there on that day, I think there were about 25 or so. 
I will call the names. Robert, it will stand. You know, you are still that young boy then. Robert, he was described as a man of passion. Does it reflect? Sit down. Benson. Benson. Okay, Benson, he, he was described as organizer of, okay, this thing was, I had told my daughter to write it, so she was the one writing and she was just 13 years old. <laughs> yeah, she was of, of, of the life purpose. He was, he was described as the organizer. He would organize everything. And I, those ones of you who know Benson. Kevin. Kevin. There were two Kevins. I don't know where the other one is. There were two Kevins. So the, the, the one Kevin was that one. And then there was one Kevin because my daughter was 13 years. So she didn't know to, how to write the other Kevin. So K with a K and K and one with a C. <laughs> The K one was described as. Um, let me let me put on my glasses. If it will help. He was described as the kind for one for all of all the cases. There were two Ks. He was the kind. He was the more of the kinder one. So Kevin, <laughs> yeah, he was described to keep the smile. The K, it is what the world needs for that smile. You can imagine the impacts that you will have. Bill, 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 yes. <laughs> By the way, they were so young. <laughs> it was described as a Jaguar with a Trevor. So we, we, they said, watch them go. Watch them go. They will go places. Wafula. Wafula was quiet but calculative. <laughs> Andrew. Andrew has the last word of counsel, so we advised everyone to listen to him. Because, you know, we had gone through a session and we had said listen to him because he would always have the last word. John. John, he was called the M, or the Magnificent for Christ. Who is John? Yeah? My dear. No, John, my dear, I think is M.M. Steve, come a true Christ stature, because he was very calm, very... Rachel, she was described as the coordinator. She will stop at nothing until things are done. Kavata. Kavata. Ah, come on. Be okay here, Kavata. Kavata. Good manager of time. <laughs> A good steward. You, you can see the impact that, that as a partner, if you bring them to your home, and I, I didn't even know that Kavata looks like that, but that was 15 years ago. There was somebody called Ogeto. Ogeto, he was of noble character. Clement. Clement was created for elephant tasks, not tasks, not the tasks, and he will accomplish much. Jefferson Tua. Jefferson Tua, you fixed Massey's computer, you are a blessing. We appreciated your outlook of life and how you carry yourself. Can you see, if you know who he is, just look for him and tell him that. M.M. M.M. was the, the mother. Because he didn't have, yes, he's there. He didn't, he didn't have another name. Mother, give this man more tasks. <laughs> he will get them done. Mother, I, I saw him fixing a few some things here, computer there. You see, it just follows you. And these are things that you did just immediately after you guys left college. There was somebody called Ruth. Ruth is a very good supporter and a keen listener. Flora. 
the young men should read Proverbs 31 to find her. <laughs> Fresia, Fresia, okay, because you know she, she, she looked very, yeah, so, okay. Fresia was fresh and wants to accomplish much. Kevin, Kevin, the second one now with a C. I don't know whether it is this Kevin, the one who's talking here. Take all the case out and put a C. And he will tackle the C for Kevin. Anything that comes with a C, any word that comes with a C, character, what was given to Kevin with a C. Tish. <laughs> you go to stand. She was, she was described as an eagle. She cares for her young ones because she was always describing and says, that's that. Shiru is another eagle who will travel far to get things done. Angie, adventurous and ready to fix all, all the, what the world d uh, does. She can fix all the energy issues within the team. This was just an example of what we just wrote. And when we are talking about impact, it is the impact now that we all are always looking for. I joined Life Ministry, OK, the first time was in 1992. 1992. In an evening, I was walking home. That time I stayed in, no, not 1992. I think it was 1992, yeah, 1992, 1993. Okay, you know, when the hair goes, by the way, also memories sometimes go. So I was walking home in an evening, and I met this guy. And then he told me, and then he told me that he works with the life ministry, tall, smiling, nice, nice guy, smiling, and very soft spoken, a deep, nice voice. I think he should have been to radio. And he told me about life ministry. And I said, okay, fine, I, I'll, uh, it's good, I'll, I'll go and look for you. In the morning, very first thing, I woke up very early. And there was this smiling guy again on the road. So I gave him a, a lift. Then he told me about life ministry. How I joined life ministry. Tim. Yeah, that was Tim. That's how the impact. Yeah. And, I, and as we listen even to more stories, I will just briefly look at how opening doors can make a difference. Just opening doors. You can see we open doors for these young ones. And even right now, we are still following where they are and knowing. And you can even see. Yeah. What does it mean to a partner to open doors for, for people? Currently, we are, after you, you know, working in, in the bank, leaving it, uh, I'm still a board member there. We decided that we wanted to do something that has impact on us, that will have impact on the future, and that also has impact to the community, and has impact on the ministry that we do. So we decided we go into coffee farming. And, and the scaling up, in the sense that there were three things that we considered. Quality, that we were going to do and provide things for quality, and we were going to ensure that we drive consistency, and that we were going to give best price. So we are also exporters. So we went to a place in Andy Hills and set up the, on, on the same 
but we still, so we are 50% in Nairobi and 50% at the farm. Now, the impact we are talking about impact has been so great for the years that we have st done since 2021 than all the things that I did in the bank. And I, that one I can tell you. We've even had occasion where uh, last year we went on a cruise ship with a team of, 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 of people who are also affiliated. And there are 2,500 people inside. We were given a chance to go and sing. Can you imagine singing a song in Meru and in Kalenjin to 2,000 people in a cruise ship on the same and Christian songs and just praising the Lord like that? It's, it, it, it's something that sometimes you, you can never know where God is, 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 is taking you. And some of the things that we've done, even at the, at the farm, we are calling ourselves the good middleman. That's why we are look, looking for quality, consistency, and giving out the best price. Then, when I connect it now to the reason why we are saying we are opening doors, we open the doors for ministry. In fact, Life Ministries is, is a partner to, on, on the same. So on every October of 10, of, of 10th of October, when we are celebrating a holiday, we are celebrating what is called the coffee festival there. And we invite people from around the world. And they come to the farm. Last, last week, no, the, on 10 of 10 of 10, just the one that has just ended, we had 15 different countries represented at the farm. And they came on the same. On the 10 10, we get a preacher. We get to distribute Bibles on maybe the Kalenjin and then the impact. Now, these guys who came this one, this period, um, the, 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 the last one, they came to the farm and they were expecting, because they are coffee people, expecting just coffee. But then there was preaching that was going to be done there. Now, while the preacher was talking, he was talking about purpose. The purpose. If you have purpose, this is what you will get. You will even be successful. You will do this. There was this ch guy, guy from Hong Kong. He's from ch in Chinese. He's young. So the group, because they, they had stayed with us for five days, had told him, so what do you do? He said, he, he, he stays with the mother. So people told him, oh, you need to, to get out, uh, go out there. He, he says, how do I do it? So when the preaching was going on, his, this guy said, so if you do get purpose on Christ, this is what, what will happen. He said, yeah. So the guys were telling him, yeah. And you know, they had been dressed now uh, with shukas traditionally like that because it was, it was also cultural. Do you know, when the preacher was going on, he said, so what do I do to get this purpose? He was told, you'll go to the preacher, and the preacher will pray for you and you get it. He didn't wait. He just stood and went. And when the preacher was still preaching, so he told him, oh, what, what is it? He says, I want that purpose. <laughs> so the preacher prayed and laid hands on him. When he finished the prayer, the preacher, I think something came on him and says, I think you have been anointed. Because the tents had been set for the, 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 the people around, the, the, I mean, the, the pastors, he was told, now we are promoting you to, to Stipia. Now, look at the impact of that. It has the, the impact that this guy goes with the word. He was coming for coffee, but he goes with the word to Hong Kong. So when we talk about the impact and opening doors, it is that. How many of us who are partners are willing to open doors so that Christ can have impact in the lives of others? Because it's, it's, it's really not about us. It is about, about others. In 2022, while still doing on the same farm,
we asked Arnold here and Life Ministry to give us Bibles. And I think they gave us about 60 Bibles because we were distributing some, some Bibles out there at, at, at the farm. And luckily, it was campaign time. So we got these this people who are saying, oh, it's campaign. So, and um, it, the first lady happened to have been close around. So she said, I can come and do what you guys want to do with, with, with you. So she came and we were distributing Bibles. There is a lady who was drunk, you know, because it was only being given to ladies. So they were all lining up. Uh, Arnold, thanks for the, the Bibles. That is, that is the partnership that, about, that we are talking about uh, relating with life ministry. When they, they had lined up, there were about 250, but we had less than 100 Bibles to give. So there was a lady who saw that these Bibles were going to be finished and she was already drunk. So she shouted from behind and said, if I get the Bible, yeah, I, will, I will get saved on, on, on the same. We, so you see, because Mama was just now giving out the, the Bibles like this, so she had from, from the same and says, so can that lady come? Of course, she took the Bible the only mistake is that she went and sold it. <laughs> because the, the Bible is at 1,000 shillings. Yeah, yeah. But we are saying, look at the impact that as a partner of life ministry you can be able to do. You, 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 it's just not about the, the impact within your area, but the impact on the things that, that, that we are able to, to, to impact on the lives of others just by opening a door. The other day, uh, we, we had, uh, because we get very many visitors from, from the place. By the way, our home here in Nairobi, they have not, not so many people have come here. But out in the farm, maybe there were 40 different nationalities. And yet, we st by the way, we started in 19, 20, 2019, that's when we, 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 we did the farm, did where everybody could, 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 could come in and just allow them to be able to do. 40 different nationalities have come to the farm. What we have done, we have purposed and put the, 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 the four spiritual laws, which Arnold has been always sending. Um, with, with our Bible distributing um, uh, person fear from life ministry. So we put on, because we, we can't go and preach to those guys, when they know that, they, that tip, because we sit on round tables like this, maybe when they're eating. So we just put something like that as a for spiritual laws. And they would read and then they ask, so what is this thing about the life ministry? Then we get a chance of able to explain all what life ministry is, is all about. Those are the things that we are talking about that if you want to have impact, the strategies can actually change. Let me, let me just use some of the, the, the things that I have observed for being part of life ministry. People are hungry for truth. People are hungry for love. People are hungry for a purpose. People are hungry of belonging somewhere. People are hungry to do tasks. People are hungry for support or to support. They are they're, they're hungry. But if they don't find where they would need to support, they will go and, and, and look for it elsewhere. So all this, like love for the younger, the younger generation, like the, the, these are the ones when you take them to your home, or when you become a partner, like the partners who, who, who talked about here, like the engineer from Isiolo, when you partner with them, God is present in those things that these guys are looking for. It, it, 
somebody is looking for just love outside. It, 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 it's only that they can find it. God is in there. So you, it is possible that you use now your, 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 your partnerships to reach out to them. The power in these hungry situations where it is, it is what creates the desire. Somebody is looking for love and is so young and is looking just for somebody to accommodate them in the house. One of the, the people that we use now even as uh, for, for, for those when those visitors come to cook was a young man in, in our church and they were part of the dancing team. The elders of the church, you know, because they wear a suit. I, I actually didn't want to wear a suit because sometimes, you know, when you wear a suit, like you are, you, you know it. Yeah, and then, of course, because I am also from the farm. You, 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 a lot of them would always look at this young man coming and says, we have lost our church. But who says it is about us or alone? Maybe God is sending this so young men were coming to church and then dancing. So being an elder in the church, I always insisted, can we allow these young men to dance? Do you know the same 25 people, the young men who around 2008 or 2006, I can't remember, 2010, when I was an elder in the church, we had allowed them to keep dancing at other styles of rolling. The same 25 came, I'm not saying 27, they came July this year. They called each other and says, let us go and look at, let's go and see our elder in, in, in here in Karen. And they came and they said, we'll come and cook, we'll come and do all those things. Just make sure that you provide food. But if you don't even provide food, we are now able, we'll bring, we'll bring the, 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 the food ourselves and, and be able to cook ourselves. So look at the impact that you as a partner can have on the life of someone else. So it is not just giving the word, it is the partners and the partnering that is key. Opening your wallet, opening your doors in the house, and doing things that can actually bring out this, this young man for Christ. Because that is the, 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 the thing that we are really looking for. I watched a film uh, the other day on Netflix. It's called The Jesus Revolution. This is, this is about uh, a 1967 setting. Yeah. I'm truthful, so you said we can work with 10 more minutes. So that you all know, yeah. So you 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 open doors for the young people, so that God can can Christ can have an impact even in their lives. And we're just part of the of of, of that story of 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 this. And when we celebrate all these young men, that is the story. I said I will carry this book, so that this book becomes a testimony in in itself. Then. When you close doors, if you don't open the doors, the door of helping, the door of feeding, the door, the door of giving bravely your money, the door of even opening the real door, you know you are closing Christ out. Suppose Christ has said, I will enter through that door. How, if you close, what happens? How do we help people find their own faith in Jesus and not our own. You know, when I am a church elder and I now restrict, I do a lot of restrictions sometimes. It's like we want to find our own faith and not the faith of the others that we are, we are, we are, we are trying to help. A lot of these, these things can be summarized if you watch a film called the Jesus Revolution, which I, watched, I, watched, I wanted to say, which I watched recently. The Jesus Revolution was about young people, most of them were at the university in 1967 at that time. And they were looking for a different kind of life, a different kind of love. So they went and formed the hippie, you know that the hippie society. 
And out of it, there was a, 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 a young, vibrant pastor. But he was also part of the hippie. So he would allow them to do quite a number of things. But he was called Loni. Loni, Jack, and Greg. Jack, Greg was from a broken family. Jack was a pastor of a church. And then there was the, the daughter of the pastor. The daughter of the pastor met this Loni. And Loni told him about, told this lady about Christ. He says, no, but my father is a pastor. Says, and he was dressed just, just like that. The transformation that you hear about what happened in San Francisco in 1967 was brought about by this journey being allowed by this pastor to go to their home and the do and because the daughter described the father that dad do you know that you could be closing people out from the church because the church was shrinking 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 so you could and then he said how am i doing it he said you know because you people are it's all about yourself you are, it's like you are out there to find your own faith and not the faith of others so the father asked her, so do you think I am square? The, the, the word that was used for the, those days to mean square was, you are rigid, following the rules, and this is like this. So if you are, uh, these are the rules of the church. And these are the doctrines. So the daughter told the, the, the pastor that you are the squarest of the square. Yeah. That changed the mind of the pastor. If, if you have the opportunity, just watch that Jesus revolution. So we are calling upon everyone that let us open doors. Let Christ come in. Because if we close that door, suppose Christ wanted to come through that door. Of course, when we talk about closing and opening of doors, we are talking about letting the word of God come in in the best way through your uh, mentoring through your finances through life actually through life and those are things that we are saying through your labor through your influence on finances on leadership you you allow your, your, your others to come into your life. And that is when you have an impact. The story of the farm, when we, when we talk about the, the story of, of the farm, it has made us go to countries that we would never have thought we would ever go to. But then we've connected and say it is the doing of God in this, in this thing. That's why we are saying we're opening doors. Of course, those that are also restricted because it's still we open and close because we can't just open so that everybody can can walk in it is it's the concept it's the concept so we just want to encourage and tell the 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 the, 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 the partners keep doing it in fact when i was chairman of um, uh, and i really want to thank arnold you, you allowed the board to be able to experience the, 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 the things that you you people were experiencing. You are able. You are allowed the, the the board to be part of the the the, the strategies that you are creating. In fact, the going forward, when it comes to now redesigning strategy for 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 life ministry, you got to see. How, who are these who are our targets? Yeah, because you are targeting at a certain time. They are not behaving the same way these other ones were behaving in, 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 in 2009. They are different. These are different lot. So how, how are you going to do it? As, as multiplying disciples now, the ones who are, who are here, because we are all multiplying disciples. How are we to account for the multiplying disciples? Because we can say we want one million disciples. Would Christ come and do that? Christ would want to do 
the impact thing by saying allow this one so that that one can create can create many. just that one that's why i was talking about the story of the jesus revolution and say hey jesus would be doing it differently now what about the organization life ministry itself how is it supposed to be impacted because it is it is like the company of jesus how is it how is it transforming allowing others to be able to come in so we 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 we, we got to to do it the way companies run and the way christ would run it and looking at it not the the, the by restricting but by opening door and praying and ensuring that god's presence is always in the situation because god is always present in, in most of the situation and we just want to thank our partners because you, partners have had the greatest impact some of them are not recorded and those are the ones that can really make the difference thank you so much i i think you, you know sometimes you can get so overwhelmed by the impact that the partners can to do for life ministry that all of it it's really not about us but it's about the people that Christ would want them to go into what we are doing. The, the letting the people come in opening the doors for others and having a meaningful impact in our society in you know the, the, the place where we are and even in our lives I personally want to, to be grateful to, to life ministry because it has always shaped you know, the way I would, I would, I would want to, to imagine things. You come up with a lot of theories, you know, this is how we would, we would want to. But always the thing is Christ. Yeah, you are always looking at Christ. If you do deep life, it's Christ. So it's not about the company or the, 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 the organization. It's about Christ. Suppose we keep doing that even as partners, that this thing is all about Christ so that we can have a meaningful impact in the lives of others. So, and that's our prayer. And that is our, 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 our call to say, partners, let us allow life lead the leadership or the labor. Let's be people of influence, the way it was described in the wind, build, uh, and send. Let's allow them to be able to grow wherever we are. Because we are doing it beyond even life ministry itself. It's, it's all about Jesus. Thank you, and God be the, to, to glory. Thank you so much. Can we appreciate our keynote speaker, Mr. Sami Langat? And as we are still there, and Mr. Sami talked about opening the doors. I don't want to, I want to work with that heat and that momentum. And I want to just quickly take this chance to welcome Mary Joy, who is going to help us understand which are these doors that we need to open. Mary Joy is one of the, I can say, longest partner, you know, giver of life. <laughs> You know, in Life Ministry Kenya, and she's really enthusiastic and excited about what Life Ministry is all about. Help me just appreciate Mary Joy as she helps us understand what doors are we opening. Thank you, KK. Let me begin by touching on what Sami said, Sami Langat said, when he talked about open doors, it reminded me of the song by Lionel Harris that says, make our hearts an open door. So you can go look up that song, it will actually speak to that. So thank you very much for this opportunity. I thank God for standing here before you. As you've heard, my name is Mary Joy. I got saved at eight years old when I was in Sunday school. My journey with life ministry began in the 70s with the I Found It campaign. How many of you remember that? 
Yes, yeah, I can see a few hands. We, we get, you can age us, yes. It was a fantastic evangelistic initiative because inst instinctively somebody wanted to know what did you find? And the answer was new life in Jesus Christ. So that's when I started with life ministry. As a teenager, I was at the Kenya High School and I was impacted by both navigators and life ministry. There was Susan Rogers and Joyce Mutua who took me through discipleship. I ended up becoming the CU chair lady. I served in other CU of, uh, official positions, but CU chair lady was my final thing besides being the deputy head of school. And then I handed over to Pamela Masinde, now Pamela Wafuku, I don't know if she's here. That's a person I handed over to the CEO when I left school. Then when I started working, a colleague introduced me to a singles Bible study that was in town. It was run by Campus Crusade, otherwise known as Life Ministry, and this Bible study was called Monday Night Life. How many of you know about Monday Night Life, MNL? Yes, I see a few of you. Yes, so we met in Kabuz, a restaurant in town, which later changed its name to Rosette. It was near the parliament, so when they began this construction, we had to relocate. There are people who are still meeting as Monday Night Live even today. And uh, we'd have our annual retreat, uh, go down to Mombasa, Diani, and our regular speakers at those retreats were people like Della Adedevo. We had Matthews Mwalwa and the late Kweku Hatchful were some of the speakers who engaged with us at that time. Then I was a member of St. Andrew's Youth, and I was a youth leader. Straight after high school, I became a youth leader. And that's where I met people like Tim Kiruhi, Arnold Nzova, Wamaitha, and there was also Ruth uh, Warohio, who was now a friend of my mother. But now these are the younger people. We, uh, we met in fellowship, and very soon they began to join life ministry. So as far back as 1989, when team joined Life Ministry, I was one of the people who was his supporters and uh, unknown to him, I began working early because I lost my father in 87 and somebody said, I think you need to get a job. So I began working without a degree, without anything, my salary, <laughs> and then he gave me his budget. I looked at his, his budget was like two times what my salary was, but I started off there, whatever I could give, I gave him and I think over time it grew. And uh, there were other people I supported. So when team went to Zimbabwe, the, uh, the Kiruhis went to Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, those people who got saved, the Zimbabweans, I will meet them in heaven, they'll be saying thank you for giving to the Lord. Akina Arnold went to Mozambique, I'll meet Mozambicans, I've never been to Mozambique, and they'll be saying thank you for giving to the Lord, I am here because you gave. And then uh, we have the, uh, it was uh, the uh, Wafukos, they went to Jamaica. And even there, the Lord is going to be, I'll meet people who will tell me thank you for giving to the Lord because I was supporting them. So I know I also supported the Balusis. And then in the 90s, I was part of the missions team at our church and we did door-to-door -door evangelism with four spiritual laws. We had been trained with that, with all these life ministry people, we had no choice but to learn about four spiritual laws. So we went to Sultan Hamoud, we did door-to-door -door in Sultan Hamoud town, and then we had an open air crusade, and then after that, at night, we showed the Jesus film. And I tell you, Jesus film is fantastic because people, okay, there we are doing it in Swahili, but when it goes out to the villages, it's actually in mother tongue, and people get amazed at here hearing Jesus speak their own language. And then, after that, uh, I served in a board with Sami Langat, student-led movement. And uh, when they celebrated 10 years, that's the time Kanyungi was the chair, of, was the national director. When they did the 10-year anniversary, we went to Nairobi, Nakuru, and Eldoret. Now at this time, I was not working. What happened is I worked for Caltex Oil, and when they sold their businesses, I decided I'll be a freelance uh, consultant and be involved in ministry. So my financial giving went, but one of the things I did is I got a handshake at that time and I decided to give a, give a gift to Life Ministry in case I never have the opportunity to give that kind of money. But God is gracious, things have turned around. So that time gave me time to be involved more. So we went to Nairobi, we went to schools in Nairobi, in Akuru and Eldoret as part of the celebration of the 10 years at the student-led movement. I, well, during that time also, I got invited to be a speaker at a Life Ministry youth camp in Kilifi. 
I was also the plenary speaker at a youth camp. This was 2013, at a youth camp for armed forces children in Eldoret. While we were celebrating our 50 years jubilee for the country, I didn't see much of what happened because being the plenary speaker meant I spoke every morning and then at night we used to have these revival meetings. I tell you, we see military guys, you should see how they worship and how they are casting out these things that the young people have. It was fantastic. I went for my marching orders at DOD. So I was told this is what we are expecting from you. So as we give or pledge to give, we need to take cognizance that many of us, especially those of us with pay slips, have uh, been hit quite significantly by all the taxes that are coming. So most likely, even if we've been supporting people, there are some people whose support has probably gone down. But on the other side, there are people who, despite everything that's happening, your income has increased. So I want to encourage us that uh, you can still give a one-time gift to a life ministry person or to any of the ministries we'll talk about today. If your income has gone up for that season, just do that. You may be filling a gap that has been left by somebody who genuinely want to give, but right now they're not in a position to give. And the gift you give is a seed that is going to bear much fruit. We've been told those stories here. And they say you can count the number of seeds in an orange, but you cannot count the number of oranges that will come from one seed. So that support you give that reaches one person may have a huge multiplier effect when that one life is like that one of Billy Graham. For those who cannot give financially, you can also give of your time. We've had life, mean, life stands for leadership, influence, finances, and expertise. And we'll look at it. So we'll look at it as your form. I'm hoping everybody has this blue form in front of them. We'll be looking at it. So I thank God for those who supported Susan Rogers and Joyce Mutua because as a result of that, I was discipled. I be, later on became not just serving in the youth, I served in the youth at St. Andrews for 15 years. I served as a deacon for seven years. I was ordained as a church elder 24 years ago. I have since moved to Sitam, and again I'm taking up leadership roles. In the last seven years, I have been going to high schools for Sunday services. This year, and in fact, I was very happy to hear about Seven Mountains because in the last two, three years, I have defaulted my message to the Seven Mountains of Influence because we need to prepare this generation to go and make an impact in the marketplace. So this year alone, I have been to over 20 schools around the country, and God willing, tomorrow I go to my 21st school. And I was just looking at the results, and I saw that uh, over 650 students students have received Christ or rededicated their life this year. So as I end, let us remember, we have a limited time to preach the gospel. We need to maximize it. And Matthew 6, 19 to 21 in the message of version says, don't hold treasure down here where it gets eaten by moths and corroded by rust or worse, stolen by burglars. Stockpile treasure in heaven where it is safe from moth and rust and burglars. It's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is, is the place where you'll most want to be and end up being. So if you're partnering with, say, Life Frontier School, and you hear there are floods in Tana River, your first concern will be, is the school affected? Where your treasure is, is where your heart will be. So when you've completed the forms, the ashes are going to take to pick up this form. So I want to direct you to the blue forms. If you don't have a form, please raise your hand. And then we see how we can be able to partner in the different areas. You'll put in your name, your phone, and the email, and then you're talking about my best or our best contribution through leadership, influence, finances, and expertise. So the first part is multiply your leadership and influence. You can reach students, and that's obviously when we, we have many ways we can reach students. So if you want to reach students, you tick students, and then that way you'll be touching the students in high schools and in some of these other open places that they are getting opportunities to be reached. You want to engage with the leaders, there's things like Ignite and uh, people in the marketplace. Planting churches means that life ministry comes alongside you and equips you and your church. The people who want to start a church in things like the spiritual laws, the discipleship, so that you're able to grow the church. Then leveraging digital strategies. You know the young people are actually more in social media than in the physical churches, so we need to be able to reach them. Then when you talk about multiplying your finances, you can identify a staff. And actually, even if you have somebody you, you support, maybe you can find 
that from some of these people who we are seeing around. Who else can you give something? Maybe a one-time gift, because probably this year, things have been so bad, whatever it is that people have been partnering with them are not able to give. You can just add another. And you can have put many names and just put the amount against each name and have as many as possible. The, the blue copies are in the packet that you are given. So if you're given a packet, you'll see the blue, the blue form. So please access it. And then in terms of field offices, we have all those offices, Nairobi, Kilifi, Nakuru. Make your choice. You can pick more than one and indicate monthly, quarterly, annually. Even a one-time gift is OK. It will make a difference. Then we have the different teams. We've talked about the students, the led ministry, the leaders, the church, and the digital. And you again put your, your amount there. Then resource strategies. Jesus Film. Jesus Film is one of the most powerful evangelistic tools because you take it out there to people who have never heard the gospel and they hear Jesus speaking in their own language. That's usually a game changer. Military ministry, I have had a chance. As I mentioned, I did the youth camp for them. Then there's family life and then the special projects. Last year, by, I was privileged to go to the Life Frontier School in Madogo. I have always I've been supporting them. So when they celebrate 25 years, Arnold said, since you've been supporting, why don't you come for the 25 years anniversary? And it is awesome to see the people it is impacting. You know, it is out there very near Garissa. And a lot of those people are of another faith, but they really want their children to come to that school. So if you want to reach out to people in that other faith, here is a place you can put your money into because as they bring their children there, they are being taught the godly values. So I have a, a, a passion for that area. We even have a hospital who are starting there. So that is a place, an easy way of reaching out to them. ILU, we already saw the video. ILU is International Leadership University. They have the Nairobi campus just across the field after you pass the police station. And then they have Kitengela. We were there the other day at Kitengela to see how far the construction of the university is. In the Seven Mountains, education is very key. And if we want to impact people and in, in bring out a generation that has values that are going to help this nation, then we need to be able to input into that so that we create a platform where people, when they're looking for universities, this is a place they'll go to. And I'll tell you for sure, even people of other faiths like to come to our Christian universities because they like the values that we share with them there. So you can put in the amount monthly, quarterly, annually, even a one-time gift. It will go a great way. And then finally, there's multiply your expertise. Maybe you're not working, or maybe you're working, but you're an expert in a particular area. By offering that expertise, you're actually sparing life ministry from having to pay somebody to do that task. And there are many areas. Some might not be listed here. If there's another area that has not been listed here and you're good at it, please put it there. It will truly be appreciated. And I can tell you, for sure without a shadow of doubt that whatever it is we are doing today is going to go a long way. One of my favorite quotes says, don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds that you plant. The songwriter said, freely you have received, freely give. Go in my name and because you believe, others will know that I live. So may the Lord bless you as you commit to partner in one or more categories. Thank you very much. Can you appreciate Mary Joy again? <laughs> wonderful testimony. Uh, I've already filled mine. I hope everyone has filled theirs. <laughs> so I guess that time was sufficient enough for us to fill the form. And please hand it uh, to any one of the life ministry uh, staff who are walking around. I just want to make an announcement that uh, if you want to go to the places of convenience to refresh yourself, for the guests, you can go this way. There's an opening right there at that corner for, that will lead to uh, the, the uh, places of convenience. For the rest of the guests, we have the, the office block, the main office block. Please, you can uh, feel free to go there and you know relieve uh, your 
yourself. I would want to also take this time to appreciate uh, one other board member of Life Ministry Kenya, Engineer Solomon Kitema. We are here together with your wife. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much, sir, for the service that you've given to the ministry. At this particular point, I want us to take a short break before we change gears and get to the second part of our celebration today. And to do that, I would like to welcome and invite the worship team, please, to come and uh, help us transition with one beautiful, you know, uh, song. I don't want to say number because uh, the, the people who are saying numbers are my seniors. <laughs> you know, come and give us a number. <laughs> Uh, the, the worship team might not understand that because they belong to a different generation. So I would invite us to just, as the worship team comes, please, uh, quickly, I would invite us to just rise up and thank the Lord as we stretch our hands and our feet. If you want to relieve yourself, please, uh, you can uh, uh, go as I've directed. And then we are going to get into the next session in the next one or two minutes. God bless you, worship team. Alright, so Sawa, we are going to uh, declare a song called Jesus Ear because of what he has done um, and we are happy uh, today for the great things that he has done. Alright, so join us in singing uh, that song. We'll have it also on the screens together as we rise on our feet. If I'm not wrong. Yeah.
it up to Jesus. Thank you so much, the praise and worship team. You may have your seats. So at this particular point, we are officially transitioning into the commissioning service. Today we are very happy and we are delighted to commission the new uh, Life Ministry Kenya National Director. And to help us do that, I will invite here first uh, Arnold Nzova, who is the outgoing National Director, to just give his remarks and lead us from there. Welcome, Arnold. Can we appreciate Arnold as he comes? Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Buana uh, Sifiwe. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. Now, uh, I prepared my wife to come with me here, and she has disappeared. So if you happen to see her, please hold her hand and bring her on stage. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes. Um, well, uh, let me take this opportunity. I have only 10 minutes to make a few remarks. And uh, before I do that, um, allow me to, I'll be focusing on two things. Because now we are transitioning from the Partners Open Day to another part of the program. And so I've come in as a bridge, as a bridge. And so because of that, I want to focus on two themes, a, a grateful heart, truly, truly grateful to God. And then because this gathering is partners, I will also mention something about uh, partners. And uh, so to begin with, uh, let me just say this. I truly, truly want to thank God. As we stand here together with my wife, Rebecca, and the rest of the family, we are grateful, grateful to God. Amen? Amen. Because when we came in, our acceptance speech was entitled, We Have a Prayer. It's common for leaders. When they are coming in, in a new assignment, they talk about what they want to do in the first 100 days. That's what politicians do. And we have to be different. But when you offer a prayer to God and he answers that prayer and even beyond someone's imagination, we have no choice but to overflow with what? A grateful heart to God for his faithfulness. And so in light of that, as we appreciate God, I will request my wife to say hi and probably read a scripture and then I will continue. Hi. <laughs> hi. I've been told to say hi. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm grateful to God for this day. And um, as I stand here, there are two scriptures that come to mind. One of the scripture is a scripture that uh, we wrote for our wedding. Next year, we'll be celebrating 25 years in marriage. And uh, there's a scripture that we put in our wedding card. And that scripture has continued to hold us till today. And that is in Psalms 84, verse 11, that says, The Lord is a sun and a shield. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. And every time that scripture, we've been going back to that scripture, reminding ourselves about that scripture that for sure God is a son and a shield. And these 10 years we have been in life ministry, we have experienced God in our lives. And he has become a son and a shield to us. And as he says, no good thing does he withhold from those whose work is blameless. And then the other scripture that uh, reminded me as we stand here is in also in Psalms 115. And this is a psalm that David says, not to us, not unto us, but unto you, O Lord, be all the glory. As we look back in the 10 years, what God has done and accomplished in the ministry through us, we say, not to us, but unto you, O Lord, be all the glory and honor for the great things that you have done. Thank you. God bless you. Now, it is also very common when leaders are transitioning from one position to another in such an occasion to list down their achievements. I will not do that. So I'm likely to disappoint you. Is that okay? 
Yes, I'm likely to disappoint you. And uh, that's why truly beginning with that theme of grateful heart to God, we are truly, truly grateful to God. One of the definitions, or rather my definition of leadership assignments or leadership in that matter is partnership with God. And what I mean by partnership with God is that recognition that you need a very close walk with the Lord. You hear his voice. And when God speaks, just obey and do what he has instructed. So at the end of it all, it is all about God. Um, the subject I've been studying lately in a number of months has been in the area of stewardship and uh, just a constant reminder that God owns it all. And since God owns it all, including this work we do, it is God's work. As human beings, we have got this tendency of feeling that we are the one doing it. And since God owns it all, neither you nor I have any right to claim any ownership of something that is not ours. It is the work of God. No owner, and God will not allow that, no owner is going to stand by while someone else seeks to take what is theirs. And that's why I fear taking any glory from God because it is his work, so to speak. But as I talk about, um, because I mean we are focusing on the sovereignty of God and the work of the Great Commission, even as we partner with him, it's good to remind ourselves that uh, there is no shared ownership when it comes to God's kingdom. Amen? No shared ownership. We are just but stewards. Every assignment we get is a stewardship assignment. And as much as I say uh, leadership is partnership, I just want to disqualify it by saying that um, when it comes to God, God is very key. We just join him in what he is at work. And it is in that spirit that I want one, okay, once you first of all understand that and you apply that spiritual truth in your life, you have set yourself on a journey of understanding what God can accomplish in the work of the Great Commission. I had a devotion I led recently to African leaders and uh, I entitled it Great Commission, Great Organization, and Great leaders. Now, we are in the business of the Great Commission. And if we are in business of Great Commission, we must trust God to work closely with great leaders, build great organization, but to borrow Dr. Farai's terminology, instead of organization, build great institutions, institutions, because we are talking about Great Commission. Great Commission. And so in light of that, as outgoing leaders, and for Robert, who is succeeding me, I am grateful to God, and I pray the same, probably even more measure. We have had the privilege of surrounding ourselves with great people. Great people. And some of these great peoples are leaders, partners, and many others. And because I cannot mention everyone, when you surround yourself with great people, or a community that wants you to win or succeed in ministry, with the help of God, you are guaranteed to see exploits and wonders to God's glory. And so because I cannot mention everyone that we are truly grateful for, I'll just be talking about different communities. Truly, God, we have seen the hand of God. I want to thank God too, and that's why my wife is here, for the family community and the support. Life Ministry Kenya is one organization you can never give effective leadership if you do not have the support of the family because of the challenges, the challenges which are involved. And I want to thank God for the grateful to God for the support of my immediate family and many others. I also want to be grateful to God again for the, our com global community of Campus Crusade for Christ led by Dr. Farai here, our Vice President. 
we have got a community up there and even at an African level that really inspires all leaders to trust God for bigger things. And it is that community and their support that we are also truly, truly grateful to God because of the support they have offered. And thank you, Dr. Farai, and more so for giving us space even to be able to finish our term of 10 years, our term of 10 years, and even by God's grace, a bonus. A bonus of an extra year to God's glory. And we are truly, truly grateful. Now, most people, including now, when we had a fellowship time, they have been approaching me and saying, now that you have retired, what are you doing? What are you going to be doing? Even Sikulu repeated the same, now that you have retired. Now, it's unfortunate that sometimes when you serve at that level of a CEO, you are moving on, it is retirement. No, I'm not retiring. We are still in the ministry and continuing the work of God. And, uh, but if you really want to know when I'm retiring legally, I still have five years. You can calculate my age. But in the ministry, we continue. But I also want to thank God truly for the great leaders, our board members, our board members, both the former and the current, truly grateful for their support. Life Ministry Kenya has been blessed with great leaders by any standard. And for Robert to succeed in me, please don't fear surrounding yourself with great leaders. They are leaders, that's my advice, they are leaders who get intimidated or they, whatever. Just open your life, surround yourself with the right leaders. And Sami Langat, who has spoken, I mean, let me tell you what. You need leaders around your life as we give leadership to Christian organization who tells you what you don't want to hear. Are we together? And challenge your way of thinking and correct you and all that to inspire you to grow. But most of the time what we do is when we find strong leaders, great leaders around us, we keep them aside. We push them aside, away from us, because we want to be, not to be corrected or straightened and that kind of a thing. But offering yourself to be surrounded by that community of great leaders in our board, I mean we are truly grateful to God. Staff family community. Staff family community. Great support. Truly grateful to all the staff and the support they have given. And without staff, no leader can be able to do much. And so to that end, truly, truly grateful to God. The rest of the category of partners that I want to be grateful to God is our partners. And I would like a very brief presentation that I'll be presenting of about very few slides. Is it on? And I transition this in a heart of appreciation because most of you have asked what I'll be doing, what we'll be doing. We have transi we'll be doing actually the work that we have been doing for the last three years. We were doubling, actually not doubling, is there something tripling in different roles? We are different roles. Different roles, but for today I'll just talk one because this event is a gathering of our partners. And so I'm truly grateful. And Life Ministry Kenya has got different categories of our partners. In our vision, because I'm, I'm a part of the global partner development team of the organization for the last three years, we have got our vision. And I cannot see what is being projected, but where our vision is, we begin with every leader an effective fundraiser to address the challenge of sustainability. In brief, the work that uh, we will be doing as we transition and we have been doing it is working with other national ministries in Africa as part of the global partner development to build the capacity for national sustainability. And so our vision is focusing on leaders. Then the second one is every staff 100% support. And there's a leader who is going out one of the biggest pain, and I'm talking to partners, one of the biggest pain a leader goes through every month, and I had to go through it, is a situation where you are leading a staff team, you are leading a staff team, and at the end of the month, you begin to look at, which I was doing every month, at how much you are going to pay your staff. You find some of the staff who have been working so hard, 
Then you look at what you are likely to pay them because in most cases it's up and down. And as a leader, you feel the pain of leading a staff team who do not have the privilege of enjoying 100% of their staff support. And so in that regard, truly grateful to all the partners who support our staff. You are the star. Yeah. You contribute very greatly. Our other every, in light of our vision, is every team fully funded. Every team fully funded. We have got different teams here and there. And what we attempt to do is, most of you as partners, you join in as a staff partner and you are connected. My challenge as I go, and we have been making that effort, if you are a staff partner and you have stood with that partner for long, I challenge you to consider growing. As staff members, let me be honest with you, we have got this tendency of, we hold our partners so close to ourselves, we don't want them to give them opportunity to be blessed of God in partnering beyond the staff support. And funding our teams, we talk of every team fully funded, we aim at moving our staff partners to grow into team partnership, team supporting the various teams, the opportunity you have been given. I challenge you as we go on, we made an attempt of transitioning quite a number of them, and we have got testimonies, I'll not mention names, and it has been a great success as we talk about. And so if you are here, you have been supporting teams, the various teams and all that, or you have been given to the teams, Thank you. We have a grateful heart for your partnership and the support and pray that you continue. The other every, in light of our vision, is systems. Every national office with an effective system. I hope we're on that slide. Effective systems. Now, systems in the world we are living in are very important. I think it hasn't mentioned here, but let me take the opportunity because it has not mentioned. We just completed a system that has taken very long. Making giving easy. Making giving easy for you partners. It hasn't been mentioned here, but since that is the work I am doing for other national ministries, and we started in Kenya before rolling out to other African countries, you as a partner, you need to be aware of it. I know Life Ministry Kenya has, we have got MPESA system, that new system, as partners, I request you request for that because now it's operational and working. It helps for you as a partner to be connected with our accounting system so that as an organization we can build a database that not only not a staff member connecting with you, but also uh, you are connected with the bigger organizations for purposes of... Uh, connecting you with what really the Lord is doing. The last vision statement there, and I think we have added one more for Africa that I will mention, it is every city with a growing network of life partners. Leaders, who, partners who are giving their leadership, influence, finance, and expertise. Now that is where Ignite Movement falls in, and I want to say thank you. Thank you to all the partners under the Ignite Movement who have again given their leadership. I don't have opportunity to say that, I mean to appreciate all of them by name, but you know yourself, most of you are here. Thank you for your partnership and continue praying. The Ignite movement that started from Kenya in 2018, birthed from Indonesia. Dr. Lucy, I have seen you, we were together with you. God bless you. The joy is it has expanded to many other African countries. That is part of the work we will be doing, helping other uh, national ministries uh, in Africa. And I think for me, it has been very exciting. One of our board members, I won't mention again the name, but you know yourself asked me, are you happy with what you are doing currently? And my response is, I think I am happy because I love challenges. I love new challenges. And I've always wondered why every assignment we have ever taken within Life Ministry Kenya since 95, has been just challenges, challenges to push us to continue growing and trusting God more and more. So the Ignite movement is one of the things that uh, we will be doing. And I think um, this, the next slide may be talking about what Kevin talked about. Kenya, 
Because of what the Lord has been doing and supporting other African countries, we have the privilege of hosting Global Ignite event for the first time. All the events have been happening in Indonesia. I think this will be the fourth one. And it's a great, great opportunity. Because why am I saying this? From individual staff partner, you can go, you can grow to a team partner, begin contributing more than just funds, be given an opportunity to give you a leadership, influence, expertise, and we have had that privilege. And for me, I think it is a joy to continue doing that. And so Ignite next year is a major event that we request for your prayers. And, uh, but beside that, there are many other partners. I want to recognize, grateful to God, beside movements led by staff, we have got non-staff movements that contributes very greatly to the work of Life Ministry Kenya. Marketplace leaders, busy doing it. In other words, we are not the star. Partners, we have had the privilege of joining these non-staff movements, the Nairobi Associates movement that has been there for many years. Partnership with the churches in conducting our training, doing wonderful things. The Okalao Central Kenya movement, and several others. I have had that joy and I'm truly grateful. And I want to single Central Kenya partnership because throughout the leadership, the movement wanted to be hijacked when I came in. There were, when you have a succeeding movement, there are people interested, and it has happened many ways. People running away with the strategies of the organization. And so it was one of the first challenges I faced. And so I remember we gave the team I was a new leader, and I told them I'm not going to fight God's work. Those who are fighting for the movement, or Kalao movement, decide where you want to be part of Life Ministry Kenya or this other side that I will not mention. And I remember they took time to pray and fast, and finally they came to me as a new leader, as a new leader, and said, We have decided to stick with Life Ministry Kenya. And because of that, I recognized I needed to do whatever it takes in that movement. And I'm truly grateful. There are a few others, but I want to single that. Because the impact that the Lord has done through that non-staff movement, it's amazing. Let me tell you what, it is even beyond sometimes the staff movement. Way beyond. The Spirit of God, joining the Spirit of God where he's at work. And that movement gave birth to the team of intercessors, who I'm convinced interceded to God for the breakthroughs that we had last year to the glory of God. But I'm not here to mention them. Is that okay? I'm not here to mention them. I leave it. And so, partners, you play a very major role. In the work that we do, we say that because we are focusing on sustainability, helping national ministries, that the path to sustainability is paved by life partners. That excites me. And that's why, while in Life Ministry Kenya, one of the first things I did was to start what we call a partner relations department. A department that is focused and centered on our partners because of the role we play. And as a result of it on the last page, that's why we developed the magazine. Is that the page that is there? That magazine that we called Life Partners. Life Partners. Focus is partners because before it used to be staff members. Are we together? Promoting what God is doing. So all the time you see uh, what? And why I'm bringing it is because a number of countries in Africa have adopted it. I don't need to mention. Truly grateful to God. Truly grateful to God. We have produced this magazine is centered on partners. I think this is the only thing I will request Robert not to change. And that's why I'm doing it before partners. <laughs> so that it is in the presence of many witnesses. The focus of this annual report is the impact of what life partners are doing and contributing. It's not just staff members. So you have a major role to play. And 
with Dr. Farai's permission, because I think I'm excited what has been happening in Kenya. Now we'll trust God, pray God willing. We will begin publishing an Africa-wide Life Partners magazine that features partners across Africa to inspire each other on the contribution they make, not just funds, money, and all that, because you play a very major role. And so to that end, I want to say God bless you and thank you for your partnership, and I plead you continue with the same. In conclusion, I said I will not talk about what, I mean, again, when leaders are living, there is this also the te temptation of what is it that they are leaving behind? What is it that is their legacy? And sometimes I think we get it wrong. Because I'm convinced that the only thing that gets sent onto heaven are the things we did for God and others through his power and presence in us. These are the things that will count for eternity. Legacy. Many people talk about when they are exiting and all that. What legacy have you left? Many people talk about legacy. When someone leaves things on earth. All the physical things and everything that has been accomplished to God's glory, they will remain here on earth. I am not taking the successes of Life Ministry Kenya. But... Legacy simply refers to what a person, not just what a person has left behind, but the true legacy in my view involves that which is sent ahead. Are we together? That which is sent ahead. We will never fully know our personal legacies until we stand before our Savior and our Lord and hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I request for your prayers so that we can finish successfully in this journey. God bless you. Master of Ceremony, if it's okay, allow me to take this opportunity before we step out of the stage to invite um, Advocate Kamonjo uh, to represent the board chair in making the remarks. And uh, Karibu Sana, it's been a joy working together with you and all the other board members. God bless you. Karibu Sana. I was told to finish in three minutes. I think I finished in one minute, so you can take the rest. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you very much. My name is Kamonjo Kiburi, Bira Kiburi, because we are in a church gathering. I am an advocate of the High Court of Kenya based in Nakuru. We, and I also serve in the board. I was asked to represent the board chair, Dr. Lucy Kiapi. In illegal terms, I would say I am holding brief. And mine will be easy. I have taken notes to tame myself against speaking because the temptation to, to say a lot happens, particularly when you are paid to talk like I am. So I want to kindly ask all the board members present to come up here. I, I believe uh, the dais is strong enough. If it is not, then uh, possibly we can stop. Kindly. Uh, please, all the directors present. Eh, hey. Mambo. If it can withstand my weight, it can uh, take you as well. Uh, I want them to introduce themselves and what they do, kindly. Um, hello. I'm Dindi, a uh, member of the board, um, passionate about Ignite and really leading the Ignite movement, getting the board along. Thank you. We are Dr. Yes, my name is uh, Kenneth Mwangi, a member of the board. 
in charge of coordinating Central Kenya and also involved in Ignite. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dr. Esa Mushemi, a life ministry. I'm in charge of Life Frontier School. I love it, I love it, I love it. Good morning and praise the Lord. I'm Solomon Moliketema, a member of this board and in charge of the Nairobi region together with Bishop Kefa Omae and I'm passionate about the student ministry. Be blessed. Farah is my name. I serve on the board and uh, representing the Campus Crusade for Christ. Buana Sifiwe. Kwa majina ni George Mamboleo. I serve on the board as a member and in charge of Western Kenya, that is Nyanza and the Western Province former. So that's what, I, but at the same time, I'm a long serving staff of Life Ministry Kenya. Thank you. Uh, thank you, directors. You may take your seats. There are many others who could not be able to join us. Uh, Madam Dr. Lucy Kiapi was not able to make it due to some circumstances. And uh, uh, on my part, I am, in ch uh, I am in charge of Nakuru. Warmest regards and best wishes from my wife, Dr. Florence Wanjaka Monjo, who could not join us on account of commitment at her place of work. Uh, we want to appreciate you all for joining us in this year's partners open and commissioning of the new director. Uh, life Minister, uh, this year we celebrate 51 years of helping fulfill the Lord's Great Commission in Kenya and beyond in partnership with the body of Christ and we want to thank all partners for the vital role you play in this journey. May the good Lord richly bless you. Throughout this year, together with Life Ministry Africa Office, we were engaged in the process of identifying the ninth National Director for Life Ministry Kenya. We are grateful that the Lord led us to identify Lord, uh, Robert Balusi, who will be commissioned today. He has served as a staff member of Life Ministry Kenya for the last 23 years. Since 2019, he has been serving as missionary, leading our ministry in Malawi. As a board, we are excited about the smooth uh, leadership transition that has ha happened and the new chapter that the ministry is getting into. We look forward to even greater impact as he helped fulfill the Great Commission in Kenya and beyond our borders. Thank you for joining us today, for being a great part of God's doing through life ministry. As you all know, life uh, stands for leadership, influence, finances, and expertise. And we are all offering our part to be able to achieve this. As I wait to invite the incoming uh, national director, uh, as uh, the next person who will be conducting the commissioning. We wish to commend the staff who have served, particularly our brother Arnold Zova. You give yourself 110% with passion, with dedication. You've said you will not narrate your achievements or whatever, but as a board we say, we are very proud of what you are able to do, for what you allowed the Lord 
to accomplish through you. And I want to believe that at the end of the day, it is not the great exploits that we are able to talk, but that at the end of the day, will be found faithful. Uh, one day, I was in court waiting to join my matters, uh, to go in and listen to my matters. And a famous Nairobi advocate found me in the corridors, Harrison Kenyanjui. And he told me, my brother, I was on the way coming, and I was reading my Bible. And this verse challenged me. I know you are busy, but kindly allow me to just share with you. So first Samuel 12, and then he proceeded. And it was about the farewell speech of Samuel. And he was saying, it challenged me as a lawyer. This is a man that stands and says, I stand before you, I've been young, and now I am old and gray. You know me, even my sons are among you. But testify before God and his anointed, whose ox have I ever stolen? Whose donkey did I ever steal? From whom have I ever taken a bribe? Whoever have I ever oppressed? And they all testified and said, you have never cheated us. You have not done any of these things. And he said, as an old man looking at the sunset of his life, says, the good Lord has had. And I want us, the outgoing and the incoming, that uh, Robert Barusi, after you serve your 10 years, in 2035, you will come and say, great partners, you gave from your resources, retro and big, Staff, you committed your lives to serve this great ministry. Testify before the Lord. Was I faithful in handling of the donations that you made? Whose donation did I ever divert? Who did I serve? Who volunteered to serve? And I sabotage their ministry. And when they stand and say, we testify before the Lord, you have been faithful, and you have not oppressed us. You have not diverted the resources. You, the, the great commission that the Lord gave me, I have pushed it ahead. Then, your legacy would have been served. May the good Lord Help us, and may the good Lord bless you. Thank you, sir. you can all agree that this is a top gear session, so I want to maintain the same gear. <laughs> At this particular point, I just want to invite uh, uh, the team from the Campus Crusade family. I want to uh, invite on stage uh, Girma uh, Aliaye, the national team leader for uh, Ethiopia, and also uh, Gideon Mzonya, to just come and give their congratulatory messages to uh, Robert Balusian family, please. Can you appreciate them? Bwana Sifiwe, ndugu zangu wa Kenya, ni wafundishe kiswahili au ni onge kile kingeza changu. Yeah. Kiswahili. Okay. Uh, kazi nile opewa ni kutoa salamu kutoka Tanzania. Ndugu yangu atatoa pongezi. Um, katika rekodi ya Kenya na ni siku ya leo kumshukuru Mungu kwa ajili ya partners. Miaka mitano baada ya Kenya Life Ministry kuanzishwa, walituma missionary kuja Tanzania kuanzisha Life Ministry. Na hawakuishia hapo, walituma uh, a uh, staff ambaye ni 
alikuwa ni NTL ambaye ni former NTL before my predecessor. Kwa hiyo Kenya mna mchango mkubwa kwa Tanzania kuanzishwa na kuendelea. Na tumekuwa mkituma mission, missionaries lakini pia kwa sababu tunajifunza kutoka kwenu tumetuma tumetuma salamu kwenu kwamba tunaendelea kujifunza namna ya kutuma umishonari na sisi tumeanza kutuma wamishonari mwaka jana tumetuma timu ya vijana watano turkana kusaidia kutengeneza simulizi za bibiria zinazosaidia kwenye evangelism discipleship na church planting lakini pia tulituma timu hiyo hiyo mara mbili Malawi kwa barusi lakini pia tulituma timu hizo hizo Ethiopia kwa hiyo tunaendelea kujifunza kutoka kwenu kama wazazi wenu wazazi wetu na tutaendelea kutuma na tutaendelea ku appreciate partners. Niwashukuru sana salamu nyingi kutoka kwa Life Minister Tanzania kwa Ano Rizova kwa kazi nzuri unayofanya. By the way Ano Rizova ni kocha wangu kwenye hii nafasi ya ukurugenzi au national director. Na pia salamu nyingi sana kwa Barusi na tuko pamoja ku partner na wewe na Life Minister kwa ujumla ili tuhakishe kila mtu anamjua Kristo. Mungu awabariki sana. Just a greeting. Yeah. Amen to that. I even if I didn't understand. <laughs> I understood when he said Ethiopia. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> first I want to say congratulations to the whole family of my life ministry for a, a peaceful transition uh, between leaders because that is essential for uh, the continued fruitfulness of uh, the organization. So, congratulations again on that. Um, second, I want to say a few things to uh, my brother Arnold and uh, Rebecca. I want to say three things uh, to you guys. First, uh, I want to say congratulations because you have a successor. Ha having uh, a successor is a blessing because now you can trust the ministry you labored to someone. So, congratulations on that. The second thing I want to say is thank you. Thank you for your sacrifices. I understand how hard leading uh, a spiritual ministry like uh, a life ministry. What makes our, uh, our leadership uh, really tough? <clears throat> leadership in general is very tough. But spiritual ministry is uh, extra tough. Why? The first reason that makes spiritual ministry very tough is because we have a very old adversary that just keeps uh, looking to opportunity to pull you down. You know, every business has a competitor. Every political party has an opponent. And the spiritual leaders have adversaries. So this is spiritual, that is why, that's why spiritual leadership is very tough. The second thing in a ministry like life ministry, uh, what makes it very tough is that uh, a friend of mine once uh, t told me, when I ch challenged him, why don't you join us in uh, our ministry? So he said, I actually like your ministry very much, but I'm scared of one thing. And I said, I asked him, what is that? And he said, in your ministry, you guys ask for both the dream and the interpretation. <laughs> Which is like, in many leadership positions, you are provided with funding, a manpower, everything, and the vision, and you are implementer. In organizations like us, you are required to bring your own funding, funding for your uh, organization, and also you are required to lead and implement. So the responsibility is double or triple. It makes it very hard. So uh, thank you for leading through that, through that pressure. And finally, obviously, leadership is tough because we lead people. Uh, we lead people, and uh, leadership is all about leading people. And leading people is not easy. It's always tough. Uh, so, and a business uh, leader, who is my, my friend, he said, uh, we, we were talking about uh, like a year, like an annual wrap up, and we were reporting to one another. He, he said, 
like I congratulated him for his achievement. He said, no, 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 no. I have to congratulate you, actually. Why? Because, basically, you lead missionaries who are volunteers, who raise their own support. And I can fire the staff member who misbehaves like that. But you, you can't. You pray for that person. You carry him. <laughs> so leading people in our context is really challenging. So I want to say thank you for your all your sacrifices. And finally, I want to say, I want to encourage you that the Lord doesn't forget. After all this, people may forget. Don't expect anything from people. But the Lord never forgets. For my brother Robert uh, and uh, Grace Abalusi, you are welcome. We are here to work with you. Um, I just say two things to you as well. One, maybe you are, you think like, like that you need to fill in the shoes of uh, uh, Arnold. No, you are not called to fill in his shoes. You are not supposed to be like him. But you are called to stand on his shoulders. Next leaders are not called to stand in the shoes of the previous leaders. Next leaders are supposed to stand on the shoulders of all the sacrifices that have been made before. And you continue. <clears throat> and ministry leadership is about stewardship, which is you receive whatever you see from God. And there is like, in, among churches, among Christian leadership, I've realized that this concept of st stewardship is highly misinterpreted. A stewardship interpreted that you take something, you keep it, and you pass it. No, it's not like that. A stewardship is you take something, you multiply it, and you pass it on. So, if you receive one, you make it two. If you receive two, you make it four. If you receive five, you make it ten. May the Lord help you. God bless. The gear is on, thank you so much. At this particular time, I would want to invite on stage, thank you so much for your patience. We are doing well. I would want to invite on stage uh, the Vice President, uh, uh, Mr. Dr. Dr. Farai Katsande, to just come and give us the commissioning message and take over from this particular point. Can we appreciate Dr. Farai? Okay, so what a wonderful moment to be in the presence of the Lord. I first of all want to appreciate uh, the board members that are here and uh, the service and the work that you do for the Great Commission and the work that God has entrusted to all of us. It is such a joy to have men and women who sacrifice their time and uh, precious time uh, business people value equate every minute to some dollars and so it you know it's amazing how much dollars you are giving to us as a movement by sacrificing your time so help me just appreciate the board members of for life ministry um, I also want to appreciate Arnold and uh, Rebecca for the commitment the sacrifice and the, the hard work that they have shown over the years to help bring life ministry where it is today. I remember exactly 11 years ago, um, and Arnold was serving on my team. And uh, after our meetings, and I had been praying just to seek the Lord for the next leader for Kenya and really um, didn't know how to approach it. So whilst we were having meetings, I think it was in Arare, and then the Lord just placed it on my heart to say, I think this is time you need to send Arnold back home. So, but I was scared to start the conversation because I didn't know whether Arnold would interpret it that uh, I didn't want him on my immediate team or he would hear the Lord exactly the way I was hearing. 
So I took courage and I said to Arnold, um, after completing the organizational assessment for Life Ministry Kenya, I do feel that the Lord is uh, entrusting you to move back home and take over leadership so that we can do uh, the next things that needs to be done. And so today I just want you to join uh, with me to clap hands to appreciate Arnold for taking that positively <laughs> and for leading us where we are today. And that journey was not complete until uh, after installing Arnold as a national uh, director for national team leader for Life Ministry Kenya, the next thing we grappled with was um, how do we really transform the board? So that was our next conversation. And uh, it was in those conversations that the Lord brought in a wonderful man who became a close counterpart and close friend in the Great Commission. And, uh, you know, Sami Langati became our board chairperson. And I can tell you how Sami really, really invested his life in Arnold's life. Because Arnold would give me every feedback for every meeting that he would have spent with Sami. And one of the things that he told me, I remember one day we were going to Sami's office very early in the morning and he said well if you really want to meet Sami you just have to be there very very early in the morning in his office and so Sami thank you so much for investing in Arnold I think uh, the leadership quality you see in Arnold there's quite a lot of investment from Sami in helping shaping that up so we really want to say thank you Sami for your great work so let's put our hands together for Sami too <laughs> Um, the beauty is I have about 20 minutes so with the commission, so I know what I'm doing, Robert, and I'll take it simple. I'm informed, and this is a great honor for me to appreciate Baba Balusi and uh, Robert's dad, uh, who is with us. And uh, so can I ask, humbly ask you to stand up, sir, so that we can welcome him so let's appreciate uh this is robert's dad for for raising up robert and uh, um, for being a model to him so thank you so much okay so before we get into the actual commissioning which should not take us long but it um, I just want to say this, that um, Campus Crusade for Christ being present in 198 countries in the world is a movement that God has entrusted to our generation. That when we all come together to rally behind it, we will actually be able to make a greater impact. And we want to celebrate the impact of this movement since 1951, when Bill Bright was inspired by the Lord to begin this movement and later on spreading across the world. And our oldest movement in Africa was established in 1967 um, in Ghana, and then later on moved to Nigeria. And then the story goes on to keep on growing uh, over and over. Whereas I want to appreciate the initiatives and the involvement of the sending country, which is predominantly the US, where this movement came from, and the generosity and the gifts that the US ministry has entrusted to the whole world so that our ministries can be established everywhere. I do believe that we are at a different juncture as the movement in Africa that we need to grow our national ministries to become sustainable so that 
our fulfillment of the Great Commission no longer continue to be dependent on the mother country that founded the movement, but in every, every country where we are established, God can raise up men and women like you to ensure that that movement is locally sustainable and that it is making an impact in, another, in other countries. And this is where Life Ministry Kenya, uh, together with the board and the leadership, has made a greater impact by growing out the language, the commitment, and the sacrifice to ensure that our movement becomes self-sustaining so that we can make a greater impact uh, for the future. Let me just say this, that uh, the biggest problem that has bedeviled Africa, both in our context as the church and also Africa, you know, secular, is that we have struggled as a continent to build solid and strong firm institutions that can lead our nations, that can lead our societies, and that can bring in deep change that can last from one generation to the other. There may be some arguments about why Africa is more dependent and why Africa looks out to the other continents for its betterment. But the reality is that if Africa, the gospel or is growing in the global south, as people are saying, and we are seeing more and more people in the global south coming to the knowledge of Jesus and the church is growing in the global south, then in the same manner, we really need to see the aspect of funding missions and becoming sustainable nations is also growing in the global south. And in order for us to achieve that, all of us have to embrace this philosophy and understanding that the God we believe and the God we worship is actually a God who believes in stronger institutions. When you look at God himself, God himself is an institution. You have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the three works as a unit, as an institution. And those three different elements that makes the Godhead helps to make the, the Godhead function and to function more effectively. And then if you read the Bible in the story of, in the book of Genesis, you will also see that everything that God set up, he actually set it up in the form of uh, an institution. Everything is institutionalized. You look at the universe, for example, the earth and the universe, it is an institution. It has got life of its own, it is sustainable, it has got system that operates, and it is self-governing. But you can also go deeper from that and you look at the human life. I'm grateful you have doctors here like Dr. Dindi. So if you look at human life, the human person is actually an institution. It is not governed by a single part. It is a conglomerate of different parts brought in together and the powered by a specific system that would make sure that the human body functions effectively and efficiently. You move from that, you will also look at how God brings in family as an institution. And then you look at how God builds in the church as an institution. And then you go deeper to look at how God builds up governments as an institution. So the future that Africa Campus Crusade for Christ is really looking at and that we are driving is that we need to come to a time where we are building sustainable Great Commission institutions that will carry the Great Commission from this generation until future generations. And in order for us to do that, 
there are so many things that are to do with sustainability that we really need to drive. For example, we need to have sustainable local leadership. It is not time that our movements will continue to depend from external leadership. We may partner with other bodies, but we want to see more and more local leadership developing ownership of the institution called Life Ministry and ownership of the institution so that we can empower our generations to carry out the Great Commission. It also talk about how do we generate resources. Giruma, thank you for what you said. How do we think about when we, what we get should multiply so that when we multiply, it will add to effectiveness and impact. And uh, growing from the aspect of getting what we need to get, consume, and go again, get what we need to get, consume, again, go and get what we need to get and consume. But when you are looking about being sustainable, you are looking at how do we really drive this process. I'll give you a very good example. Since 1973, when Life Ministry Kenya was established, it stands today because there are men and women who have dedicated to the vision from the day it was incepted, and they have continuously entrusted God with their own resources to make sure that this institution can continue to live and to survive. And those men and women could be local, could be, could be also international. But we are saying that we are at an era where we would want to see Life Ministry Kenya 100% supported by local Kenyan resources. 100% contributing to sending missions using Kenyan resources. 100% owned by indigenous leadership that fully own the movement and they actually want to see the, the, the Great Commission going beyond one generation to the other. So today, as we gather here to commission Robert and Grace, as they responded to this call, I don't have to repeat about their profile, it has already been uh, said. As they responded to this call, my challenge to staff, to leadership, to all governance structures, including the board, if we are going to make the kind of impact that God wants us to see, it is when we put in the sustainability agenda on the dashboard. And we put the sustainability agenda on the dashboard because we are not trying to build a movement that will leave one generation or end up with Robert. But we want to see it to the 10th generation until Jesus comes back. And the way we do that is like I do want to appreciate building in strong governance structures, ensuring that accountability is high, ensuring that we are bringing in more opportunities to partners to contribute and to give towards what we do. But like Gilma says, when we receive what we receive, how do we multiply that to make sure that it will make a greater impact? So the future for Life Ministry Kenya, as well as all other Campus Crusade for Christ ministries in Africa, is to make sure that we turn our national ministries to become sustainable Great Commission institutions. And I can continuously emphasize the word institution because an institution lives beyond an individual being. If you don't build an institution, it will die with you. When you are gone, it is over. But when you build an institution, it will go beyond you. And so today I join together with you and uh, the entire uh, body of Campus Crusade for Christ in, um, representing the global executive team as we uh, install our brother Robert and his wife. I shall ask them to come to the stage. And uh, what we are simply doing today is to ask the Lord 
so that they go out there and live every single aspect of the calling of helping fulfill the Great Commission. And that their lives will be completely sold out to build this strong institution that we are talking about to ensure that generations from today, we can say there was a time that some people sacrificed their lives so that the Great Commission can be preached until the 10th um, or the 50, 50th generations. So at this point in time, I would want to invite uh, the pastors who will be uh, joining us to pray and to dedicate and to commit our brother Robert. You, you can come to this stage, I think. Um, and we will pray for them. All of us, we will, we will raise our hands if we can all stand on our feet. Please come to the stage. Uh, Pastor Esther, you can also join. Pastor Esther, please. Okay. This is supposed to be four, right? Three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do is, Robert, I mean, this is one of what, the humble moments, and uh, we're going to make you kneel. I don't, I don't know how long it's going to take, but <laughs> you're, gonna, you're going to do it. So as Campus Crusade for Christ, we have got one charge. We have one purpose. Our purpose is to live out Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20. And that is my commissioning scripture to you, that God is calling you to go and make disciples of all nations and making sure that the message of hope and salvation is actually taken into every generation. And as you fulfill the Great Commission, let the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God lead you. So we'll ask you to kneel, and then I'll ask uh, um, Baba here to pray, and then he will... Uh, uh, yes, Bishop Dr. Njiguna, and then Pastor Sorry. Gibson, and, and Pastor e Esther. So if we can pray uh, in that order, you can kneel, and then we'll lay hands at the end. Okay. Let's all uh, stretch our hands to them and believe God together as Bishop is praying. Our Father and our God, we are in your presence for commissioning of a couple to assume the leadership of life ministry, a ministry that has touched so many lives over the years. And I, we just pray, oh God, that you look to them graciously as they go to a level in which they have been encouraged to stand on the shoulders who have gone before those on the shoulders of those who have gone before them. We pray that you will remember them. They are entering this ministry at a very challenging time, but we believe that you they have what it takes to take life ministry to the next level. Thank you, dear Lord, for what you're doing, not only within Nairobi, but in all the places that have been mentioned, including uh, Mandogo, next to Garissa Town, uh, where there is the New Frontier School. Thank you, dear Lord, for the men and women that you've continued to use over the years to drive the agenda of life ministry. We thank you for the International Redemption University, which is also associated with life ministry. Oh God, we pray for this couple. Look to them, oh graciously. Anoint them. Release a grace that will help them to bear the burden and the responsibility of life ministry Kenya and to be able to work with all the partners and to be able to attract even more new partners so that, dear Father, there will be provision. We thank you because we are fully persuaded that when your work is done in your way, it never lacks your provision. And we have no doubt that Life Ministry is a ministry that you raised. 
and there's a ministry that is impacting so many people. We have our testimonies here, oh God, of people whose lives have been impacted in a tremendous way and they are still going forth and we are so grateful that dear Lord you have called uh, a brother Barusi and his wife to be able to come and assume this responsibility. We know that you have called them because they have what is needed to drive this vision. I pray that God, all the partners and all of us who will surround them, not only for the commissioning prayers we are doing now, but even in days to come. We thank you because you love and care them. We pray for their family members. We pray that you remember them and show yourself strong on their behalf. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we continue to lift up uh, this couple to you. Lord, we thank you because you have raised them up for a time such as this. And Lord, we come to bear witness of your goodness and of your faithfulness upon their lives, O oh God. We thank you for how you have ordered their steps, how you have lit their path. And Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness over their life, their family, their ministry over the years. And now, O oh Lord, as they stand on the edge of a new beginning, Lord, we pray the words that you spoke to Joshua. You said to Joshua, be strong and of good courage. Lord, we speak those words over them. That as they walk this journey, they will be strong. They will be of, of, of good courage. Father, we pray that you would give them vision that is as big as you are. You would give them dreams that are as big as you are. We pray that you would give them eyes to see that which you desire them to see. We pray that you will open up their ears to hear that which you desire for them to hear. We pray, O oh God, that indeed you would go ahead of them, that as they look to you, as they wait on you, you will show yourself strong and mighty on their behalf. Father, we pray that you grant them favor. Grant them favor with different partners. Grant them favor, O oh God, with the staff. Grant them favor, O oh God, wherever they step, would you go ahead and grant them favor. And Lord, we pray that this will be a time of exponential growth, that this will be a season of fruitfulness, that Father, indeed, as we look to you, when we look back in years to come, we shall testify of your goodness and of your faithfulness. So we thank you for Robert and for Grace. We thank you for the children. Lord, we present them to you as your servants. And now we pray that you would put a hedge of protection around them, that constantly, they shall never lack a testimony of your goodness and of your faithfulness. We pray all this believing and trusting in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's, let's continue to pray for them. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it has pleased you, God, in such a time as this to raise our brother Robert and grace of God even to this great responsibility. We are grateful because you have promised that you are with them to the end of the age, O oh God. You have promised that their help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. That this God is the Lord who does not sleep, he ne neither does he slumber, O oh God. That he will watch over them, my Father, in their going and in their coming in, O oh God. And that no evil, no harm will befall them, O oh God. We want to declare the cover of the blood of Jesus over them and their children, O oh God. We declare it shall be well with them, O oh God. Experience has taught us, O oh God, that greater levels, greater even challenges, O oh God. But we want to declare they shall surmount them, O oh God, because the hand of the mighty God who called them is upon them, my Father God want to declare that goodness and mercy and love and favor will follow them all the days of their lives, O oh God. And that God of heaven, my Father, they are go this ministry is going to grow in leaps and bounds, O oh God, even under the leadership of our brother Robert, O oh my Father. Thank you for greater open doors, O oh God, and even more partners, my Father God, to the glory of your name. So we commit him to you, O oh God, that the blessings of God will follow him. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so we'll do one more thing um, before I pray last. I would want to ask Arnold uh, uh, to come forward. You know, to symbolize the real passing of the button. So you need to, we, we, you need to pray uh, for Grace and Robert for the Lord to work in and through them, and uh, okay. then I'll close us in prayer. 
Let's continue in prayer. Father, in, in the name of Jesus, it's a great joy to commit Robert and Grace unto your hands, O Lord. They have responded to your calling to give leadership, stewardship leadership to Life Ministry Kenya. Father, I take this opportunity in the name of Jesus to speak blessing upon their lives, O Lord. I pray for your favor in the name of Jesus. I pray for your grace that is sufficient in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I pray that they will experience your presence in their leadership in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I pray that you will strengthen them, O oh Lord God Almighty, mm -hmm. with the power of the Holy Spirit of God to overcome whatever challenge mm -hmm. that may lie ahead of them, O oh Lord that Father, with your help, you will enable them to overcome, O oh Lord God. Father, I also pray that you may surround them with the right people, the right people to encourage them in this journey, O oh Lord, the right people who are interested in seeing them succeed in the name of Jesus, the right people with um, the best interest as they give leadership, O oh Lord, because the journey cannot be on their own, O oh Lord. As you lead them, surround them with great men and women to come alongside and support them and encourage them in the journey, O oh Lord God Almighty. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, on behalf of Life Ministry Kenya, and as the leader who is outgoing, I speak blessings from above in the name of Jesus. Amen. That through them, you'll use them to be a blessing to Life Ministry Kenya, to the body of Christ in Kenya, and even beyond Kenya, even as we all endeavor to continue building the kingdom of God. Father, I pray, may your hand be upon them, O Lord. And we will not shy away to ask that you grant them success in Jesus' mighty name because you are a merciful God. And so we commend them unto your hands, O oh Lord, and may your name be glorified upon their lives as they continue working closely with you. That's our prayer together, and we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. 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 And Lord, we say thank you for your hand of love mm -hmm. that you have released upon Robert and Grace and Lord that you could give them this opportunity to serve you in this way King of Glory we want to say thank you for choosing Robert and Lord we pray for the wisdom of the Lord mm -hmm. upon his life as his leading staff and locking horns with other leaders to steer the Great Commission in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And Lord, but above all that, Lord, you can use him to strengthen the movement so that, Lord, we leave the movement stronger for future generations. I pray for Robert, Lord, that you give him a listening ear, a heart of shepherding, and a heart of care. That, Lord, as Bill Bright said, the greatest asset that you have given to us is the people and the staff that you have entrusted to us. I therefore pray for Robert that he will be a shepherd of your servants that you have laid under his care. And that the grace of the Lord and the favor of the Lord will continue to guide them. That they will be able to love, to care, and to cherish every member of staff so that your name will be honored. Above all, Lord, I pray that uh, the spirit of unity and the spirit of abundance that will characterize his ministry, that when people want to see model of uh, a peaceful environment of serving the Lord, a loving environment of serving the Lord, an effective environment of serving the Lord, that they will see it on Robert and grace leadership. 
may you continue to anoint them and lord as we agree as a body of your people that uh, we trust you as we anoint them for this role mm. give them boldness and courage of the heart that lord they are bold to make decisions mm -hmm. and lord that they are bold to love and that they are bold to care so we give you thanks and we give you honor as we release them to go and make disciples of all nations. And Lord, as we live out this main purpose that you entrusted to your servant Bill Bright that has been passed on to us from one generation to the other. May your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So ladies and gentlemen, let's grab our hands together for Robert Balusi, our national director, who will be serving us in this season. God bless you, sir. I think that's your time, right? Yes. Thank you. God bless you. We may take our seats. Sorry. Okay. So at this point, I would want to give this opportunity to Robert to uh, speak to us and uh, that we can hear their hearts. And I hope you give your wife a minute to, to speak. Okay, God bless. Buona Sifiwe. What a wonderful privilege it is to be together in the house of the Lord to experience this great day and to experience God's goodness. Now, they say that behind every successful man, is a woman. <laughs> now, some people in Kenya have been claiming that behind every successful man is another man from the Revenue Authority. <laughs> well, behind every successful man is a woman. I have been greatly privileged to journey with this wonderful lady two, three days ago. Three days ago, we celebrated our 20th anniversary. It's been a pure joy, great adventure, uh, going, journeying through life together as we trust God together. Ladies and gentlemen, Grace Balusi. Good afternoon, and praise the Lord. Thank you so much for gracing our Partners Day and also Robert's commissioning. We truly appreciate. I wish I could name each one of you and all the familiar faces I see. I even see our brother from Sierra Leone, uh, Kebas. We, we, we fellowship in the same church in Malawi. Thank you so much. Yeah, and even for our dad traveling all the way from Kitale, Asante Baba. Yeah, and our siblings, our, our friends, our partners, you know, that since George found us in Egerton University 23 years ago and told us about trusting the Lord for partners, you know, and all these years, God has been faithful, and that's because of your obedience, Asante Nisana. And everyone who's just uh, encouraged us along the way, prayed with us, um, the people that we have had the privilege of discipling, I see some of them here. We sat on those uh, green sofas on Thika Road and prayed for all sorts of things. And so when I see you with your husbands, with your children, you know, and standing strong for the Lord, this is a great, great encouragement for us. Um, as we step into this role, um, thank you, Girma. Yes, indeed, we appreciate that um, there's no leader who comes and starts afresh, you know. We are aware Arnold has reached, may the Lord give us the grace to, to build on from, from there. Pray with us. I was reflecting about um, the verse in the Bible that says, the end of a matter is better than the beginning. And I thought, why, why is that so? And I think it's because you are supposed to finish strong, you know. The level at which you started, you are supposed to build on to it by the grace of God. And so pray for us that we will start strong, continue strong, and even finish stronger. God bless you. Um, thank you again.
Thank you very much, um, my sweetheart, for the words that have been shared. And right before her was our leaders, um, our leaders of the Global Campus Crusade family, led by Dr. Farai Katsande, together with our Chief of Staff, uh, Weston Chewe, who have presided over this ceremony today. And from the CCC family, um, we have representation from our brothers across the borders. Thank you very much, uh, our brother Girma and our brother um, Gideon. Uh, thank you for being great neighbors. There could be a discussion about who will win the marathon, <laughs> but no discussion about our unity together as we seek to help fulfill our Lord's great commission. Together with them are church leaders uh, who have uh, prayed over us. We are so grateful for the privilege. Um, our pastor, Bishop Gibson Anduvate, who is both senior pastor for International Christian Center, Nairobi, and uh, uh, bishop for Nairobi South District within the Kenya Assemblies of God. Thank you so much for honoring us with your time today. Uh, bishop Dr. Geoffrey Njuguna, um, representing the Evangelical Association of Kenya, where he serves as one of the board members. Of course, he is also the senior pastor for Deliverance Church, uh, Langata. And he also happens to serve on the uh, governing council for our school, the International Leadership University. Thank you very much, uh, Bishop Njuguna. My pastor, all the way from Kitale, Pastor Estanguinho. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming all the way and for joining together uh, in commissioning today. And as you did that, you did that as representatives of so many other church leaders, okay? Bishops, uh, leaders of churches that we partner with, churches that pray for Life Ministry Kenya. We honor you, we celebrate you, we thank you so much for honoring us with your presence this morning. Uh, well, we started in the morning and we have ended in the afternoon. Thank God we will be done pretty soon. Well, talking about our CCC family, we also have several people joining us online. At least we know that um, the staff team of Life Ministry Malawi, which is a place that we have just been serving as missionaries, we are wrapping up our assignment there. They are online. We know that you are celebrating with us and praying with us as we enter this new chapter. We thank you. Uh, several other of our national team leaders are also joining us online and several other friends and partners across the globe uh, joining together with us. We want to say thank you to all of you for uh, honoring us with your presence. A few words of appreciation as I, I enter this new chapter of my walk with the Lord and uh, engagement you know, within the life ministry. It is Isaac Newton, the famous scientist, who said those famous words that we have heard over and over again. He's the one who said that if as a scientist I have been able to see further, it is simply because I stood on the, on the shoulders of giants. It is Isaac Newton who said those words. And this morning I want to begin by paying tribute to my um, predecessor. Okay, um, our brother Arnold Nzova, who together with his wife Rebecca have led us uh, as a movement for the last 11 years. And we have had many things that have been said. And we will have a separate day when we will say even more. Uh, as the board and as the leadership team and as the staff of Life Ministry, we are looking forward to the end of the month when we will actually have a special uh, ceremony to just uh, appreciate and thank God for, for, for their service. But today, very briefly, we want to say thank you for going ahead of us and being a great example and inspiration. Many have testified about your dedication how you give yourself to this role, giving more than 100%. It was evident to all of us that were observing. Uh, all of us can testify to how you have served the Lord with excellence and with great sacrifice. And we thank God that life ministries are at a stable place at this point in time and that 
through you and the leadership team that you served with, working very closely with the board, you have set up a very strong foundation from which we can build and move forward as we trust God for an even greater future. Hallelujah. Amen. In that same vein, as I have mentioned, Arnold served very closely with a board of directors that has been very, very supportive. And we had the opportunity today to hear from our immediate former board chair, uh, Sami Langat. And um, we were not able to have our current board chair, Dr. Lucy Kiapi. She was unable to, to join us because of circumstances beyond her control. She had totally planned to come, and then things changed, and she wasn't able to come. But she did pass her apologies. And her, her remarks have already been read to us by Advocate Kamonjo. But um, these two leaders that I've talked about have served with men and women on the Life Ministry Board. And as we have already heard, they have worked very hard and greatly contributed to where Life Ministry is today. We want to thank you so much for the joy of knowing that as we serve the Lord, he has not called us alone. He has called several others who share exactly the same vision and who share the same passion and dedication to make sure that this ministry is well stewarded and stays focused on its mission to the glory of God. We want to celebrate you. We also sent an invitation to all the former national directors of uh, um, Life Ministry Kenya. And today we are represented by at least three of them. So as you heard from um, Advocate Kamonjo, I am stepping in as the ninth national director uh, for Life Ministry Kenya. And talking about standing on the shoulders of giants, we already have appreciated the, the, the season the, when Arnold was the National Director for Life Ministry Kenya. But right here in the room, we have a Bishop Dr. George Mamboleo, okay, who served as the second uh, Kenyan National uh, Director for Life Ministry. And we have uh, Timothy Mwangi, who came in, is that number five or six? I'm forgetting that exact number. How about they just stand up and you help me give a round of applause to these great servants of the Lord. I'm sorry, my attention is being drawn to, to David Nyamu, who served in an interim role as National Team Leader for Life Ministry Kenya. And I'm going to ask those leaders to stand again, because the reality is that those leaders did not serve alone. They served together with staff members. And right in this room is a lot of history that goes, in some cases, all the way back to 1973. You heard about Mary Joy sharing her involvement with the I Found It campaign all the way in 1979. You know, my children are teenagers, and they think I'm the oldest person <laughs> who has walked on the face of the earth. <laughs> they have no idea that exploits were being done for God all the way back in the day. All the staff members of Life Ministry in the house, together with former staff of Life Ministry that are here, as today we are in the 51st year of Life Ministry, helping to fulfill the Great Commission in Kenya and beyond in, the partner in partnership with the Body of Christ, the men and women who are about to stand are, 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 are a big part of the story. So at this point, why don't you just stand up? Uh, all the current and former <laughs> staff members of Life Ministry Kenya. You can see many of them all over the room. Many, many of them. And many of them out there busy working hard to ensure that we have a great day. As we celebrate this celebration, this celebration is not just about me. And even the commissioning, as I will refer to shortly, I believe is not just my commissioning, but a commissioning of all of us that the Lord, all of us that are called by his name, and all of us that are committed to that which he is committed to. Now, you heard a little bit about my family. You heard about my sweetheart, okay, who, um, yes, let's just say if you had met me 20 years ago, <laughs> Okay, Sami Langat gave you an idea of how I looked a few years after her hard work. <laughs> so had you met me many more years before then, 
it would have been a different story. But uh, we have three children and they could not join us. They are all teenagers and this happens to be a season where they are all engaged in writing exams as they approach the end of the term. Our firstborn son is called Amani. He's 18 years old. Our twin, after that we have twin daughters who are, who are 16 years old and they are joining us online. So I don't think we can see them on the screen, um, but I'm sure they are hearing me because they are, they are listening to us online. Guys, we want to thank you so much for accepting to journey with your mom and I, okay? Grace and I, as we trust God and go through the adventures of serving him together. Thank you. Thank you for joining in this adventure with us. Sometimes it has meant leaving our comfort zone and literally moving to a strange place as happened six years ago when we had to move to Malawi and you graciously accepted to do that with us. Thank you. You guys rock. Thank you very much. But you have been introduced to my dad, and so he's going to just stand again, and I have siblings, uh, I have brothers and sisters who have taken time to join with us today. Uh, a few of them across the room. If you'd kindly stand up, just so uh, we can join in appreciating you. This gives you a good picture of the rock from which I am hewn. Okay, these are my wonderful family that I'm part of. Thank you so much, guys, for making time to be with us this morning. And I'd like to join together again to just add to what has been said. Today is a partner's day to really thank God for our partners. Again, as we share about this 51-year journey, it has already been said before, we, the staff members, are not the heroes. From what I know the partners who are gathered around this room and gathered online, you are the unsung heroes of this movement. Like Mr. Langat said, many times the things you do will not make it to the headlines of our daily newspapers or on TV and on radio. Sometimes the things we read on radio and see on TV, you know, uh, reading the papers and see on TV are all kinds of heartbreaking stories. But there are so many stories of all the things that you do very quietly in obedience to the Lord that don't make it to the headlines. But as we have had today, our Father in heaven, he knows each and every story. And he is smiling where he is because of all of us, to, uh, how together as his family we are doing what he called us to do. We want you to know that we are so grateful for your role. And today really was your day. We hope that all of you had a chance to visit the booths and get a glimpse of what is happening right across all the 47 country, counties in this country. We have put a magazine in your hands. It captures just a few highlights. There is so much more. But we hope that gives you an idea of how God is answering your prayers on our behalf and how the investments that you're making in the kingdom are making a huge difference. I'm going to tell you just one story, just, just one picture of one of the things that has happened this year to give you a picture of how God is continuing to open doors for this ministry. In April, round about the Easter holiday, we partnered with various radio stations to broadcast the Jesus film. And the Jesus film has various products. There's a classic Jesus film. We now have a discipleship film called Walking with Jesus. We have a women's version called Magdalena. We have various versions of the Jesus film. So all these various versions were played on TV and some of them on radio. Um, NTV, KTN, um, KUTV, it's a long list of, of radio stations that partnered with us. And the estimates that they gave to us, these stations, is that through that effort alone, approximately 11 million people across the country got to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. That gives you just a little idea of how God is answering your prayers on our behalf. We'll never meet many of those people. Many of them will not give us feedback, but our team had the opportunity to, 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 to record decisions. At least 149 of those people reached out to our team to say, we listen to this broadcast, we committed our lives to Christ. And at least 20 of those people have been going through a discipleship process with our staff team. Only heaven will be able to fully reveal <laughs> the full extent 
of the impact that God is, what, what it is that God is doing through this movement and the role that you play as a partner in this movement. How about we all just join in appreciating the partners of Life Ministry that are gathered this morning, this afternoon. I was thinking about which scripture to share with us today as we come to the end of this day. A, a scripture that God has been placing in my heart. It's one of my life verses. And I truly believe that this is one of the things that God is calling me to. As together with my wife, we give leadership to this great movement. But as I said, I believe that this commissioning is not just for me, but all my colleagues that serve together in this great movement. But I believe that this commissioning also goes further to all of us who are called by the name of the Lord. In Genesis chapter 12, I'm going to read just the first three verses. This has sometimes been referred to as the Great Commission verse in the Old Testament. The Lord is speaking to Abraham. He says, it says here that the Lord had said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. And I will make you into a great nation, verse 2, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Three things that I see in this scripture that can be an encouragement to us and that can inspire us as we continue pursuing this journey. Trusting God to help fulfill the Great Commission in our beloved nation, Kenya, and beyond. Especially in these challenging times. Bishop Njuguna was praying and alluding to the challenging times that we are living in. If you ask Kenyans to describe the year 2024, what do you think are some of the words they'll use? <laughs> Around your tables, I'm sure we'll get to hear some very interesting words. It is because when you look at things from the political front, from the economic front, from the social front, from the spiritual front, this has been a very challenging year. We all agree with that. And many of our people are at the point where they are desperate, you know, losing hope. And many of them looking for answers. So on the one hand, it's a very, very challenging time, but on the other hand, these challenging times provide great opportunities because light shines brightest when it is dark. And so I believe if there was ever a time when the church of Jesus Christ in the nation of Kenya needs to arise and simply be the church and do what it is that Christ has called us to do, I believe that time is now. Three quick reminders from Genesis chapter 12. From verse 1, we see the character of the kinds of people that God uses to accomplish great things. We see Abraham as a man of faith. Okay, so the characteristic there is faith. And how is the faith ex exemplified here? God speaks to Abraham and tells him, leave your country, go to a place I will show you. And Abraham does not ask questions. He simply takes God at his word, believes in God's character, and moves forward in obedience. I believe those are the kinds of people that God is looking for, for such a, t a time to be the instruments that he will use to go forward. And may he help me <laughs> to be first among those as I step into this new role. But in the second verse, so the first C, it's going to be three C's, making it easy for you to remember. So the first one is character, you know, the character of the kind of person, the kind of people that God use. But in the second verse, we see God making his commitment, okay? So these kinds of people who respond to God in faith, you know, taking him at his word, what is God's promise to them? What is God's committed, co commitment? What does he commit to do? He says, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. God is committing himself and saying, you can count on me. You can depend on me. Our Lord is committed to bless, to make. 
He's committed to do much more than we could ask or imagine. And that's what gives you and I confidence as we step into that which God is calling us to. No wonder, no matter how challenging, no matter how difficult, we know that we can look to him. He is one who is committed. Who am I to not be committed? But finally, we see the commission, okay, in verse number three. He says, I will bless you. And the last sentence there is that all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. God is reminding us that when he blesses us, it is part of a bigger picture. There is a much, much bigger picture to his blessings. He blesses me not so that I can beat my chest and move around and say, look how blessed I am. But he blesses me so that I can ask the question, why is it that God has allowed me to experience these blessings? Why has he given me these opportunities? Why has he given me these privileges? And our keynote speaker already reminded us earlier that he does all these things to serve his purposes. So all the leadership that he's entrusted to us, uh, the influence that he's given to us, the finances that he entrusts to us, our expertise and everything else that we could list, there's a much bigger picture to it that he is blessing us so that many others can be blessed. And so I can't wait during these tough times that we are living in to see what God is going to do. Through all of us together, as we commit ourselves to him and as we surrender to him, I can't wait to see how God is going to use us in much, much greater ways. As we celebrate all that he has done over the last 51 years for Life Ministry Kenya, the last 11 years when Arnold and his leadership team have been giving leadership to, 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 to this great movement. I look forward to 2035 as Advocate Kamonjo was uh, challenging us, challenging me. And for us, when we will gather again and just be totally amazed as we all say, look what the Lord has done. And how he'll, he'll have worked through us to change the lives of individuals and families and neighborhoods and communities and institutions and every county in this country and the nations of the world beginning in Africa and beyond because that's what he has called us to. Amen. Thank you very much for listening to me and God bless you. Can we celebrate and uh, just appreciate the newest commissioned national <laughs> director. We really appreciate you, Robert and uh, Grace, and we thank God for the work and the favor that he has set before you. At this particular point, I just want to invite on stage Professor Tim Kiruhi, who is going to give a word of thanks and also uh, give the closing prayer. Can we appreciate Professor Tim as he comes? Thank you, thank you. Thank you, KK. I know I stand between you and lunch. So this is not a very enviable place to be. <laughs> so I'll keep my, my, my remarks very brief and then go on to pray. We want to thank God for this beautiful, beautiful day. Has it not been a good time? Uh, we want to thank God that he has been uh, present with us. And so our first appreciation goes to our Lord um, for this time. This is not Tim standing between you and lunch. <laughs> this is me. <laughs> I'd forgotten a very small detail that is very important. Remember we said that gratitude is the attitude of believers, right? So I want to invite Wamaida here and uh, Senator Shimiwa <laughs> Eunice to just come and do a very small session of saying thanks and then we're going to invite Prof. I'm really sorry about that, Prof. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'll call forward our National Director, Mr. Balusi. So we are going to appreciate our keynote speaker, Master of Ceremony, and Mary Joy that did partner challenge to us. So we'll start with... So we'll start with Mary Joy. Okay. 
followed by our able master of ceremony, KK. Welcome. Thank you. And finally, Mr. Sami Langat, welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. We have something for all of you. Make sure before you go home, you have your package. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I had begun by just appreciating the Lord for this day. Uh, it is in his name that we meet and for his glory. And uh, it's an honor for me to just uh, run through the other uh, appreciations. They are very, I'll try to be brief uh, so that we can finish quickly. Would like to thank our, allow me to start with our international guests. Um, those who are here and those following online, I did see a number of people from various countries who are following this service. And uh, would like to thank you for taking time. Dr. Farai Katsande, our global vice president, came all the way from Zimbabwe. Our chief of staff, Wesson Chewe from Zambia, thank you for coming in. Dr. Girma Altae from Ethiopia. Mr. Gideon Mzonya from Tanzania, and the other people who may be coming from other nations. I think somebody was mentioned who is based in Malawi from Sierra Leone. If you can show yourself right at the back, thank you very much. Any other internationals? Uh, somebody who came, who traveled in for this event? Okay, please appreci uh, accept our appreciation. I uh, would also like to thank our board. Thank you again for presiding over this transition. Uh, we do appreciate, thank you Mr. Kamonjo and uh, all the other board members that were introduced earlier, so allow me not to take time to go through their names uh, because of time. We'd like to thank the church leaders who led the dedication, but many other church leaders who are here. I know we may not have recognized the other pastors, bishops who are here. Kindly, if you don't mind, we'd like to request you to stand. We'd like to appreciate you for gracing this occasion. All the pastors, kindly, and uh, church leaders who are here. Look at this. Thank you so much. Let's appreciate the Lord for them. We do thank you for gracing this occasion and for your partnership with Life Ministry. Life Ministry is not a church. We exist to support the church of Jesus Christ, and so we are your servants for Jesus' sake. We'd like to also thank the leaders of various uh, other organizations which are here. We do have a number of Christian organizations. Some of them were mentioned earlier, but uh, allow me for the sake of time just request again all of them to stand. The Christian organizations, we have various uh, national uh, directors, right from Navigators, the CEO Association and others uh, who may be here present. Thank you very much for coming to <laughs> join us as well. I'd like to thank uh, our board uh, for the International Leadership Foundation. You are recognized earlier. Uh, so thank you very much, the various board members who are here uh, from International Leadership Foundation. I would also like to thank our council member. He was already mentioned from the International Leadership University. He's my boss, uh, together with the other council members. Uh, please uh, receive apologies from other members of our governing council, uh, the International Leadership University, and also our trustees. A uh, number of them are happen to be out of the country. That's why they are not here. They would have done everything possible to be here. Please receive uh, the appreciation and congratulations uh, to Robert Balusi and Grace. Allow me to also uh, just mention briefly, we do have uh, the others who have played a part in the program because they've been appreciated. I'll not repeat that, uh, but allow me to just uh, appreciate uh, the others who came from Kitale, apart from Robert's immediate family, allow me to request the others who came from Kitale to kindly stand, because you've made a lot of effort, a lot more than the rest of us. There's a whole team from their church, home church in Kitale. Thank you so much. We appreciate each one of you for coming all the way. Uh, there's a pretty big gesture of love. Thank you, Pastor Esther and the team uh, from coming from Kitale. I've also, um, want to appreciate the staff of Life Ministry. 
Um, there is, of course, an event like this. Maybe it looks simple when it is being executed, but we all know a lot of what goes behind the scenes. I know people were here until late last night, and also uh, very early this morning, and many other days before in between. Uh, so again, the staff were appreciated, but uh, let's appreciate them again, the staff of Life Ministry. <laughs> I would also like to appreciate, um, allow me to also recognize the staff of ILU who are here, uh, my team colleagues. Uh, we have a number of them here, others are following online. Yes, they are standing over there. Thank you so much uh, for also uh, participating today. In a special way, allow me to thank, of course, again, our outgoing National Director, Arnold Nzova, and his wife, Rebecca. And of course, uh, welcome and congratulate uh, Robert and Grace Balusi. We are very, very uh, excited about this new season as well and what the Lord will do through you, just like he has done for many years. And we believe that the, a lot is still ahead of us as a ministry. Allow me finally to just appreciate the service providers. Um, again, um, quite a number of people go into making an event like this successful. We would like to appreciate these ones, among others. The business events uh, who are helping with it, who helped with the tents, this particular tent and other tents, and also the food. Uh, so you'll be enjoying uh, some of their uh, work uh, just after this. There's also him and her studios. They helped with the video and PA equipment uh, to make this event possible for the sake of those following online. Uh, the Kilimani police, our neighbors here, who provided security, being a big event with many people. Uh, we also uh, have also other neighbors who helped, uh, especially with parking and the other plot. Uh, we want to thank God for neighbors. They play their role. Then we have fortune printers and chrome printers uh, who helped again with printing the materials that uh, we are enjoying, the, the ones that are on our tables and uh, the others that we have received as well. And then general suppliers, again, who played a role in making this possible. I might have left out some in case you have contributed in one way or another please know that uh, we are very grateful. Oh, and how could I forget our ministry partners? I've been a part of this ministry for 35 years, and uh, George a little longer than myself. And I have partners, I'm sure some of them are here, uh, who have faithfully given for all that time to make my ministry or our ministry together, my wife Mary, possible. Why don't we have a standing ovation, a last one, for our partners because this was your day and we would like to thank you for the work that you do to make that possible. Thank you very much. Our partners, we celebrate you. May the Lord bless you. I will not ask you to sit down. I will make the closing prayer very simple because I know time is not on our side. So if you don't mind, since we've been sitting, allow me to read out 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 uh, to 8, as our prayer of dedication, not only to Robert and Tish, or Grace as they take this new season, but also to all of us as servants of Christ, wherever God has placed us, um, uh, whether partnering with the Star Life Ministry, leading churches, in the marketplace, wherever we are, allow me to read this, and at the end, we'll just say amen, we'll pray scripture uh, this afternoon. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. For I'm already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearing. Amen.
may that be true for all of us. Maybe I can just do a closing prayer for the next season, which is food, uh, so that I release us. Uh, back to the MC. Father, we thank you. What a great occasion you have given us today. We honor you, we thank you, and thank you for everyone who has made this day special. Thank you especially for our ministry partners, uh, whom we celebrate today for their faithful uh, partnership with various staff, with the ministry, with various strategies and offices. And we also thank you for our leadership who came both from the church and from Life Ministry Campus Crusade. And we thank you for everyone who has played a part. Now as we go to lunch, uh, would you bless our time of fellowship together and celebration in your presence. We receive with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Prof. Can we appreciate Prof. Tim? Now, at this point, I would really like to thank you so much for your patience for making this event glorious. We really thank God for you, and we thank God for his grace. The weather has been good, so this is a blessed day. We want to now proceed on to lunch, so this is how we're going to uh, organize ourselves. I will allow the chief guests to, uh, to step out. They will be uh, ushered out by Wamaide, so you can follow Wamaide, she's there. And then for the rest of us, food is there and it's good. I will just invite you to take uh, your seats on your tables and we're going to invite people from each table to go and serve so that we can be orderly and we can make proper use of the you know, space that we have. So at this particular point, it's just to say, we thank God for how great he is. As the guests move out, I will just invite all of us to help me sing the hymn that says, Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, then sings my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art. Can we give the Lord a mighty clap of praise? So I would invite the first two tables from that corner, please, to proceed on to serve. The rest of us, please, get to know someone better. We want all of us, please, don't be in a hurry. Please enjoy the food that has been prepared prayerfully, joyfully, with a grateful heart. So please don't leave. Let's start with the first two tables in that corner. Just go serve. And then I'm going to be, to be inviting all the tables. In the meantime, just know someone next to, the next to you, share the testimonies, evaluate how the day has been, give us feedback so that we can improve, you know, uh, during the next phase. Thank you so much. For the moment, I will invite the worship team to just be playing music, just music. Oh, I'm a, my, my media team. Just soft night music as people proceed on to lunch. Thank you so much. God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you again in 2025 for our partners open day. Baraka.